really made the most of it, Ollie. You know, they should have had at least another couple of goals to add uh, to the two that they that they already had. Uh, but look, really, that goal really is a quality one. I've got to say, the, the cross in from the left-hand side and screen, he was brilliant. The finish from Galbraith was great. He opened up his body and took it with the inside of his right foot, top corner from, like, what, nine, ten yards. It was a brilliant finish. But the two centre-halves have been really good for Peterborough with nowhere to be seen. Mm, wonderful goal and game on. 23 minutes to go here. Leighton Orient 1, Peterborough 2. Now, there's an extraordinary goal at the CBS Arena. Adrian Clark and Jeff Peters. It's Coventry 1, Cardiff 2. So the Bluebirds have turned this around and it's another own goal. Josh Bowler down the right-hand side for the uh, Bluebirds and it has hit Liam Kitching and deflected in. He was the man who scored Cardiff's equaliser an own goal, he's now got two own goals in the same game and Coventry's playoff hopes are taking a nosedive here. Yeah, double disaster for Kitching. Uh, it's a goal that's come from absolutely nowhere. Josh Bowler, who's always a threat. Every time I see him play, he loves to run at full-backs and he did that down the right-hand side. He went on, on the outside of the left-back and just played a speculative ball across the face of goal and it hits Kitchen, who can't really sort his feet out he just hits him and loops agonisingly over the Coventry City goalkeeper into the far top corner. It, it was buoyant early on here at the CBS Arena, but it's a little bit panicky now, the atmosphere. Um, there's just been a double substitution and remarkably, Callum O'Hare hasn't entered the fray. It's, a, it's Torp that's come on. Um, along with somebody else, so Tavares, Tavares yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, it's a real surprise from Mark Robbins that he hasn't made a change there. But this is this is not going to plan for Coventry. Can you blame Kitching for that second one? The first own goal was was pretty woeful from his point of view. You you might argue, but that one it just seemed to like hit him and do no, it. No, this, this is unlucky, really. He's just he's, he's in the right position, or it seems to be in the right position for where I'm sat. Anyway, trying to defend the near post, it's flashed across the face of goal. It just sort of hits him, and I'm. Unfortunately for him, the deflection goes towards his own goal and into the far corner. It's it's a it's a terrible moment for him, for the Sky Blues. And what I want to see now is a reaction because they have coasted for I would say 50 minutes of the 70 that we've watched so far. It's a lot riding on this today for Coventry City, but you wouldn't know it. He can't stand the heat. Two own goals for Liam Kitchen. Coventry have scored all three goals here, but they trail Cardiff by two goals to one. And West Brom are right back in it, Alex Crook. They are indeed. 20 minutes to save themselves. It's West Brom 1, Watford 2. have to say, this is a brilliant finish from Brandon Thomas Asante. He missed a couple of really good chances in the first half, but he's made amends here. It was Grady Diangana off the bench who slotted the ball forward into the penalty area. He was very wide, just on the corner of the six-yard box on the left-hand side, Thomas Asante, and he's wrapped his right foot around the ball and fired beyond Daniel Backman into the far bottom corner. West Brom 1, Watford 2. And a goal at Swansea as well, Lawrence Mora. Swansea nil, QPR 1. What a huge goal for the visitors as well. And it was Steve Cook, the centre-back, who got it. It was a header back across goal from a, uh, from a corner. And Cook just adjusted his feet brilliantly. He was a couple of yards outside the six-yard box and he volleyed right foot into the far corner, right in front of the away fans who have set Celebrated wildly. A huge goal at the bottom of the table. Swansea nil, QPR 1. Goal at Middlesbrough as well, Alan Biggs. It's Middlesbrough 2, Sheffield Wednesday nil. The Borough uh, double their lead in slightly freakish circumstances, but they are at least two goals better than Sheffield Wednesday today. Isaiah Jones with an attempted cross, or if I'm being kind, a cross shot from the right. It uh, nicked off Barry Bannon on its way over, and that was enough to uh, leave James Beadle helpless as the ball looped over him and into the far corner of the net. Well, the element of luck about that, but Middlesbrough have actually stormed the second half so far. You'd have expected Sheffield Wednesday in their situation to have shown more urgency. It's been the complete reverse of that. Latte Laff has had a couple of chances, one saved by James Beadle, uh, and another one which he put over from Finn Azaz's pass, and Beadle also saved from Sam Greenwood in the approach to what should be a decisive second goal, Isaiah Jones. Sheffield Wednesday, frankly, today, have been woeful. Sheffield, it's Middlesbrough 2, Sheffield Wednesday 0. 
And what about this? Rotherham, who uh, could easily be relegated today, even if they win. They are winning and at the moment saving themselves. Sebastian Revens put them 1-0 up against Millwall. Rotherham 1, Millwall 0. Uh, let's get the team news for the 5.30 game. Live on TalkSport, Ipswich, Southampton, Joe Shannon. Two changes for Ipswich from the side that won at Blackburn on Good Friday. Cameron Burgess starts after being left on the bench following international duty for Australia. Caden Jackson is the other player to come in. Edmondson and Broadhead drop to the bench. Three changes for Southampton after conceding a late equaliser to draw at home to Middlesbrough. Jan Bednarek is fully fit after being left on the bench on Friday. Joe Aribo and Ryan Fraser also come in. Walker Peters, Smallbone and Sulemana all drop to the bench. A win takes Ipswich top of the championship after Leicester's victory over Norwich earlier. Southampton start 10 points off the top two and realistically have to win to keep their automatic promotion hopes alive. It'll be live with myself and the former Norwich and England striker Dean Ashton at 5.30 on Talk Sport. Ipswich Town against Southampton. And you're listening to the EFL on TalkSport with McDonald's. Order Mac delivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty rewards points. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. Let me rattle through a whole load of goals that have just gone in. Barnsley are now 3 1 up at Burton. Luke O'Connell uh, with the third for the Tykes. Sutton 3, Swindon 0. Harry Smith, what a rescue job Steve Morrison is doing there. Eastley uh, 2, Maidenhead 2, the equaliser, an own goal. Uh, from Nigel Atangana, Maidenhead back on level terms. Crawley go 3 0 up at Newport. Harry Maguire's brother Lawrence has got that goal. Uh, elsewhere, I told you Rotherham were leading Millwall by a goal to nil. And more bad news for Plymouth, who are a goal down at home to Bristol City. And they've had Alfie Devine on loan from Spurs sent off for a second yellow with just 12 minutes of the 90 left. So in the Championship, Birmingham are 1 0 up against Preston Coventry 1 Cardiff 2 Middlesbrough 1 Shef- Middlesbrough 2 sorry uh, Sheffield Wednesday 0 Plymouth 0 Bristol City 1 Rotherham 1 Millwall 0 Stoke 1 Huddersfield 1 live on TalkSport 2 Blackburn 4 nil up at Sunderland QPR 1 nil up at Swansea here it's West Brom 1 Watford 2 and we've got Ipswich Southampton to come live on TalkSport and then Leeds Hull at 8 also live on TalkSport TalkSport Breakfast with Arnold Clark. Get the UK's best used car deals, guaranteed. Get all your must-haves this Ramadan at Asda. From a suhoor to get out of bed for, with Lancashire Farm natural yoghurt for £1.60, to sunset reunions you'll rush home for, with 1.8 kilograms of Shazan's fresh chicken breast down to £11.20. We've got every Ramadan moment covered, so you can concentrate on what really matters. Asda, that's more like it. Selected stores and lines subject to availability may exclude Asda Express and small stores. See asda.com forward slash small stores. Build the bet you want in seconds with Unibet's bet builder. You're on. Add shots, corners, cards and more. And increase your odds with bet builder rackers. Combining bet builders across multiple games and sports. Download the Unibet app or visit unibet.co.uk and get a bet builder boost every day. Unibet. You're wrong. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. Pre match only, max stake £10 minimum. Combined odds of 4 to 1 and 3 selections. T's and C's apply. How do you make good wine taste better? Let red breathe. Chill rose to perfection. Pair white with cheese. At Waitrose, we know there's one trick for all wine. Whether fruity San Leo Prosecco, crisp Mirabeau on Provence Rosé, or oaky Terre de Fiano organic Primitivo, they all taste even better when they cost less. Get 25% off when you buy six or more bottles of wine or fizz over £6 at Waitrose this Easter. Selected stores and lines subject to availability. Excludes Scotland, Wales and Jersey. Excludes bottles priced £100 and over. It's the speed. It's the competition. It's all or nothing. Team sport indoor karting. With adrenaline fueled action on every straight ramp and corner. It's where you, your mates and colleagues can be champions for the day. It's the ultimate karting experience. With 35 tracks nationwide, there's a team sport track near you. Book online and save 10% with the code GET10 at team-sport.co.uk. The future is unpredictable at times. At the Open University are the experts in distance learning, allowing you to fit study around your life. What's more, you'll have support from dedicated tutors every step of the way. Now, suddenly your possibilities are open. Search the Open University to find out more. The Open University. The future is open. Game day. The greatness. 
the goals and the glory. Game day live on Talk Sports. Carlisle United could be relegated today from uh, League One. They pull one back. The trail two one at home to Lincoln. Sam Lavelle, the former Charlton man, with the goal. Round the grounds we go. Championship first, starting here at the Hawthorns. Alex Crook. Eleven minutes to go. West Brom one, Watford two. But Watford have just had an opportunity to further extend their lead. The ball was cut back to Yasser Espria just inside the penalty area. He seemed to have all the time in the world to get his shot away. In the end, he fired tamely at Alex Palmer. But I have to say the changes that Carlos Corberan has made. Below Relatedly, uh, have made a difference for West Brom. They have a lot more energy now and they have time to maybe rescue a point from this game. West Brom 1, Watford 2. We've got a penalty at Middlesbrough, Alan Biggs. It's a penalty to Middlesbrough for a 3-0 lead. It's about to be taken by Sam Greenwood. It was for a handball off Barry Bannon. Just looking at it again, his hand was in the air. It was in an unnatural position, as they say. A pretty innocuous situation for Sheffield Wednesday defending that but a penalty was given and now Sam Greenwood with the chance to give Middlesbrough an emphatic victory here he comes hits the base of an upright a reprieve for Sheffield Wednesday not away yet it is now as Bannon actually completes the clearance so uh, it should be all over here it's not quite it remains Middlesbrough 2 Sheffield Wednesday nil. Uh, those uh, faint hopes for Rotherham have just been extinguished they failed to win today they're down Ryan Longman's equalised for Millwall Rotherham won Millwall won Barnett get a second against Oxford City in the National League Nicky Kabamba their top scorer and there's a goal at Bolton in League 1 Mickey Gray 77 on the clock it's all over here Adrian Bolton for Reading 1 and it's Aaron Connons with his hat-trick uh, it's a super strike. They just keep the ball alive. Joel Thomason gets the ball in the box. He has two shots at goal. He scuffs both of them, really, but they don't clear their lines, Reading. And as the ball just falls to Collins, he's on form today. There's no question about that. With his right foot on the half volley from about eight yards out, he rifles it into the top corner. Great celebration over in the corner as well. Next to these Bolton Wanderers supporters as well. It's been a brilliant afternoon for Ian Everett, but a brilliant afternoon for Alan Collins. Bolton four, Reading one. Uh, and we've got a goal in the Championship at the Stadium of Light. Another one there, Graham Courtney. The fight by begins. It's Sunderland 1, Blackburn Rovers 4. And do you know what? After that fourth goal went in, well, it was the case of substitutions being made by uh, Mike Dodds, the interim coach for Sunderland. Three of them, Oshish, a bit of a surprise he went off, Mundell and Roberts, they went down the bench. Chris Rigg, Bradley Dack and Jack Clark came on. And do you know what? It has paid dividends as well because Chris Rigg has got the ball at the back of the net. All right, it's a scruffy sort of goal. They all count, though, but it was a shot from Bradley Dack, saved by Ainsley Pears in the Blackburn Rovers goal. But, it, uh, well, it was one of those where it's just simply rolled out to the corner of the six-yard box. And there was Chris Rigg. One of the youngsters actually has got his name on the uh, score sheet here. Finally, for Sunderland, perhaps that'll just quietly stop the exodus from this ground. We have got 12 minutes to go. Sunderland 1, Blackburn Rovers 4. A big win for Blackburn, uh, that. Uh, there's been a goal in the National League. Dagenham and Redbridge aren't going up or down, but they lead Ebbsfleet 1-0. Josh Reese has scored again for the Daggers. Ebbsfleet, though, what a rescue job Danny Searle's done since he went in there. One defeat in nine uh, for them. Not quite safe yet. Maidenhead need a win at Eastley, and they're 3-2 up there. Sean McCorsky has put Alan Devonshire's side in front. Let's go to Coventry. What's happening there, Adrian Clark and Jeff Peters? Cardiff still leading Coventry here by two goals to one. We're into the final ten minutes. Two own goals for Lee. Liam Kitching for Coventry after Ellis Sims gave them the lead. We mentioned about Torpen Tavares coming on. Callum O'Hare has finally been introduced and they need some of his magic. They need just any kind of magic. It's been a really insipid second half performance from Coventry City. No drive, no purpose, no real urgency either. It's, it's taken me aback. The, the way that Coventry have played today Cardiff City let's give them a little bit of credit I think it's been an outstanding team performance from them great collective work rate and they've had some great chances I mean Carl and Grant really should have scored from that 1v1 it should be 3-1 to Cardiff the standout player for me Josh Bowler out on this right hand side he's, he's given Coventry a really tough time today well it looked like he was going to score the equaliser before Kitching scored his first own goal and then it was his cross which took a deflection maybe actually a double deflection which eventually came off Kitching Coventry but a little bit of time here to try and get themselves back into this and close the gap on Norwich uh, in sixth place who lost earlier on today it's Coventry 1 Cardiff 2
And made them around those playoff places because uh, Preston losing at Birmingham, Coventry losing, Norwich lost earlier here at the Hawthorns, West Brom are losing as well. Don't they want to go up these sides? Absolutely extraordinary. What's happening uh, at the Swansea.com stadium? Talk Sports Lawrence Mora. Swansea nil, QPR 1, 84 on the clock here, and Steve Cook's goal, a right foot volley on 71 minutes. Still the difference between the sides. The Swansea have absolutely battered Rangers this second half. We've seen Matt Grimes hit the bar, Yates should have scored from a header, Ollie Cooper should have done far better with a shot from 15 yards. Uh, it was a bit of a tame effort in the end. But Rangers have that all-important breakthrough and they're now camped on the edge of their area for what would be a crucial three points in their fight to stay up in the championship. 84 on the clock, Swansea nil, QPR 1. As it stands, QPR heading up to 16th in the table, 6 clear over the relegation zone. It's looking uh, bad for Fleetwoods, who have gone 4-0 down at Oxford. Mark Harris, the Welshman, with his second of the game. Oxford 4, Fleetwoods nil. Oxford chasing playoffs in League One. There's another goal at Sunderland, Graham Courtney. Uh, yes, we have, and it is Sunderland 1, Blackburn Rovers 5. I'm just waiting to actually see who's going to be given this. Two players actually went in for Blackburn Rovers. One was Sammy Smoddix and the other one was Andrew Moran. The substitute has come on. Could go to either. They both went in for it. The ball was played in the area. They've both thrown themselves forward. As for which one actually got the final touch, uh, I'm not quite sure. Actually, it's given to Moran. He's the one who's got his name on the score sheet. Sammy Smoddix will be a bit miffed because he's not therefore going to be taking, well, not at the moment anyway, taking the match ball home. He was on for a hat-trick in that one, having scored two early. On. But at the moment, though, uh, well, the remaining fans who were at the ground are now on their way out. Sunderland 1, Blackburn Rovers 5. Big goal, League 2, Meadow Lane, Ian Abrams. Notts County 2, MK Dons 3. The Dons will move into automatic promotion places if it stays like this, I think, because it was a, another brilliant goal from Ellis Harrison. Sent on as a substitute by Mike Williamson. He scored his first goal to equalise. This is brilliant, though. Sent clear on goal. He's got a lot of time to think about it. Ashby Hammond comes almost to the edge of his penalty area and Harrison sees the goalkeeper half go down on one knee and a delicious chip over him into the far corner. Two for Harrison, three for Milton Keynes and they lead with six to go. Notts County two, MK Dons three. Uh, I think they might, they'll go level on points with Mansfield and Wrexham but I think they're behind them on goal difference uh, so still just outside uh, the uh, automatic places but closing that gap uh, Dorking have equalised at Aldershot in the National League Alfie Rutherford too little too late maybe for Dorking Cambridge make it 3-1 against Wigan Danny Andrew as uh, the U's look to head towards safety let's go to Stoke what's happening there Dave Rowe it's Stoke 1 Huddersfield 1 with two and a half minutes to go and Huddersfield have very nearly snatched a dramatic winner seconds ago Diana Bergzog the substitute getting in behind McNally shot for the near post saved by Everson out for a corner prior to that Stoke have missed a stack of chances to win this game in the second half they've been the team doing all the attacking Walter Berger missed the best chance of all sent through one on one by Jun Ho good save by Lee Nichols from the corner Laron's far post header also saved by the keeper and then the rebound by McNally off the bar Rose also has headed wide from a corner it's been all Stoke until the closing stages Huddersfield have played the second half as if a point would be enough for them it wouldn't be based on the league table but that might be all they get here two to go it's live on TalkSport 2 Stoke 1 Huddersfield 1 uh, Stockport top of League 2 have scored a late goal they lead Wimbledon 1-0 Odin Bailey that at Edgeley Park and Rotherham are back in front against Millwall Charlie White where's this been all season they've won one game since the 25th of October one game in 27 Rotherham 2 Millwall 1 uh, we're heading up to full time on TalkSport one of- Talk Sport Breakfast with Arnold Clark. Sell your car with no admin fees, any make or model. Build the bet you want in seconds with Unibet's bet builder. You're on. Add shots, corners, cards, and more. And increase your odds with Bet Builder Rackers. Combining bet builders across multiple games and sports. Download the Unibet app or visit unibet.co.uk and get a bet builder boost every day. Unibet. You're on. 18 plus B gamble Pre match only. Max stake £10 minimum. Combined odds of 4 to 1 and 3 selections. T's and C's apply. The following are assembly instructions for a day trip at IKEA this Easter. Take eight plump meatballs at least and one bed that doubles as a bouncy castle. Add free 45 minutes room planning sessions. As many activities for kids as possible. 
and add one extra slice of dime cake. Combine all together and you have the perfect day out at IKEA. IKEA, the wonderful everyday. At Morrison's, get half-priced toys on brands like Hot Wheels and Barbie, plus many more in store. That's more play for them and peace for you. Morrison's to shop at Morrison's. Majority of stores subject to availability. Excludes online. Selected toys. Hot Wheels. 10-pack was £23. Now £11.50. Barbie Beach doll was £19. Now £9.50. Offer ends 14th of April. On average, Rift get their customers three grand back. I'm like a rubber ball. I come down. Let's get the ball rolling. Search Rift Tax Refunds. Play set for life and you could... <laughs> £10,000 every month for 30 years. Set for life. Play now on the National Lottery app. Terms, rules and procedures apply. Players must be 18 or over. Monday afternoon, live. Championship football on Talk Sport. What the go! Ipswich versus Southampton. Kickoff 5.30. Brilliant, brilliant goal. Monday afternoon, Techno Techno. Ford Flavor Football on Talk Sport. Goals going in. Cheltenham are 1-0 up against Exeter. They're now 2-1 down. They're going to be staying in the relegation zone. A Reese Cole penalty on 90. A Carlisle heading down there. 3-1 down now at home to Lincoln. Teddy Bishop on 93, the former Ipswich man. And Barrow pull one back late on at Morecambe by the trail. 2-1. Ben Whitfield with the goal. Barnett go three up against Oxford City in the National League. What's been happening here at the Hawthorns? Alex Crook. Only 20 seconds of normal time remaining. It's still playoff chasing West Brom 1, Watford 2. And I have to say... After the initial rally following the goal from Thomas Asante, they haven't had too many opportunities, West Brom, if any, actually, to get themselves back on level terms. Watford have been able to see this out relatively comfortable. They've just brought on uh, Jake Livermore as well to help see this out. He got a really warm ovation from the West Brom fans, the former baggy of course, we are now into added on time. It's going to be a first defeat in eight for West Brom unless they can rescue it later on. But with the way results are elsewhere, it hasn't actually harmed their chances of making it into the top six. It's West Brom 1, Watford 2. Oxford City pull one back at Barnet, but the trail 3 when they're already relegated. What's happening at Coventry? Any sign of a late surge from the home side? Adrian Clark and Jeff Peters. It's Coventry 1 at Cardiff 2. Those two Liam Kitching own goals causing pain for Coventry here. They thought they'd equalised. Hadji Wright had the ball in the back of the net but the flag went up are Coventry doing enough yeah, we're in the final minute here well it's only really in the last five or six minutes that the tempo of their passing has, has gone up again the, the movement's much much sharper and all of a sudden they look at top side again but it feels like it might be a little bit too little too late for them that was a real hammer blow when the flag went up from that Hadji right header because from there if, if that had been allowed you would have expected them to maybe go on and win this game but as it stands they're in trouble and we've just started the period of added time five minutes added on at the CBS it's Coventry 1 Cardiff 2 well there's another noise here let's just say second half has been way better than the first half and it's all square Alex Crook and it's another sensational goal West Brom 2 what for two, Darnell Furlong up from the back has just absolutely smashed home from 20 yards out, right footed it kissed the right hand post before nestling beyond Daniel Backman into the back of the net it's a goal worthy of rescuing a share of the spoils the first half was absolutely atrocious, in the second we've seen four top quality goals and that has to go down as the pick of the bunch we're into two of five added minutes. Who knows? West Brom may even win it. West Brom two, Watford two. Second half here at the Hawthorns has just been a goal of the season competition. Extraordinary stuff. Fantastic hit. It's 2-2. Two, two. Is there time for a winner here at the Hawthorns? There's a goal in League 2 at Mendelani in Abrams. Two minutes into six added on. Notch County three. MK Donstreet. Corner on the near side. Taken by Jody Jones. When he got it back... Uh, from Dan Crowley he played it low across the six yard box and for me the man of the match has been Aaron the main and steering it at the back post he converted slamming it home Notts County 
23, MK Dons 3. Thank goodness Mansfield was called off. Yeah, you've absolutely treated yourself to a cracker there. Uh, elsewhere in League 2, Harrogate go 4 1 up against Gilliam. Jack Muldoon has got the fourth uh, for Harrogate. Harrogate 4, uh, Gilliam 1. Harrogate trying to get themselves into the playoff places. Northampton go 2 0 up against Port Vale, who will remain in the bottom four. It's. Uh, We've got more goals going in. Walsall take the lead against Salford. 2-1. Mo Farr on loan from West Brom with that goal. Sutton 3, Swindon 1. Swindon pull one back. Full time at Stoke. Dave Rowe. Stoke 1, Huddersfield 1. Probably a better point for Stoke, although they will feel like it should have been a win and a big step to safety. As it was, they had to come from behind. Huddersfield had one goal ruled out in the first half. Pearson's header denied due to Jones being offside in front of the keeper. They did score, though, on the stroke of half-time. Great finish by Bojan. Radulovic is first for the club, taking a pass from Headley cutting inside and finding the top corner Stoke hit the bar through Baker they equalised early in the second half wonderful strike from Kiana Hoover in from the right to co a shot into the top corner beyond Nichols after that they missed so many chances Nichols saved well denying Berger and Laron and right at the end the Terriers went close with Bergzog denied by Eberson a point apiece Huddersfield will still be in the bottom three Stoke one Huddersfield one uh, we've got uh, a few minutes here to full time there's a late goal in the National League and Wealdstone who uh, remarkably lost to Oxford City on Friday have gone a goal down at home to Solio Moores Jamie Osborne with the goal for the Moors who are heading for the playoffs that's more bad news for David Nobles uh, Wealdstone relegation threatened side uh, is full time at Middlesbrough let's go there Alan Biggs it's Middlesbrough 2 Sheffield Wednesday Neil Borough are now unbeaten in 6 and they might have scored 6 today such was their dominance Sheffield Wednesday now without a win in 4 as such a critical stage of the season but it was the way they performed or didn't that was uh, most critical to their hopes uh, I thought after this because it, it was a standoff performance with what was effectively a front foot attacking lineup, really puzzling all the urgency came from an increasingly dominant Borough uh, who could even afford to miss a penalty Sam Greenwood slammed his kick against an upright there was also a succession of saves from James Beadle to keep West Wednesday remotely in it, plus misses from the likes of the otherwise dangerous Emmanuel Latte Laugh. But uh, he was influential enough. He stretched the Wednesday defence from the start. He was also the player whose header deflected in off uh, Michael Hehequa from a corner late in the first half that gave Borough the breakthrough. The second half was Complete, what well, almost completely one-sided. There was just one attempt, of which uh, required a save from Seni Diang uh, to uh, to deny uh, Ek Ogbo. But Borra got their second goal with some fortune. Isaiah Jones's cross come shot from the right took a wicked deflection off Barry Bannon to leave uh, James Beadle on this occasion completely helpless. And helpless, if they carry on playing like this, is what Danny Rolls Sheffield Wednesday will be Middlesbrough 2 Sheffield Wednesday nil. right we've got a corner late on here at the Hawthorns it's West Brom 2 Watford 2 the Baggies have that corner Alex Crook and this will surely be the last chance of a dramatic winner it's West Brom 2 Watford 2 the home side coming from 2-0 down with two goals in the final 20 minutes including a net buster from Darnell Furlong in stoppage time the corner is cleared and there is the full time whistle West Brom at Chalby and rest skewing a point to move them a step closer to guaranteeing a playoff place. It also extends their unbeaten run to eight matches. The first half was instantly forgettable. The second half was quite simply brilliant. Watford took the lead in the 51st minute. Edu Kayembe with a brilliant shot from outside the area into the bottom corner. They doubled that advantage when sub Milita Rajovic arrived at the far post to slide in and meet Jamal Lewis's teasing low cross on 66 minutes, four minutes later West Brom had hope, Brandon Thomas Asante with an excellent shot from an acute angle into the bottom corner and in stoppage time it was defender Furlong who popped up two yards outside the area 20 yards out and he rifled a right footed effort in off the inside of the post brilliant finish to this game, West Brom 2 Watford 2. Well they redeemed themselves with that second half, brilliant goals and a, a fantastic 45 minutes of football, the late equalisers in the National League for Rochdale and for Ebbsfleet at Dagenham 
Birmingham have won against Preston Plymouth have lost at home to Bristol City those are full times there's a goal in League 1 at Bolton Mickey Gray well, we've had two goals Adrian it's now Bolton 5 Reading 2 the first one coming from Reading on 93 minutes Paul McCary who came off the bench basically Bolton didn't clear their lines and from a couple of yards out McCary just poked the ball into the back of the net and just as you come to me 30 seconds before John Bodvartson gets his second goal on 95 minutes it was across the, across the six yard area and Bodvartson who's already got a goal himself they're in again Oh, just played it wide but yeah but Varson just inside the six yard area the ball was played across the six yard box he slid in from about two or three yards out just to poke the ball into the back of the net I think it's going to finish here in pretty much about ten seconds time area it's Bolton five Reading two Wow uh, some amazing uh, score lines uh, today where are we off to for full time next let's head to the CBS arena with Adrian Clark and Jeff Peters Coventry 1, Cardiff 2, a bad day for Liam Kitching, scoring not one but two own goals. A real blow for the Sky Blues in their push for the playoffs. They took the lead through Ellis Sims, continuing his rich vein of form, a 13th goal in 10 games, sweeping in Van Avijk's cross. Not long after, Josh Bowler looks set to equalise before Kitching thumped his attempted clearance past his own keeper. They went ahead midway through the second half, the uh, uh, Bluebirds. Bowler again involved, his cross deflected in off the unfortunate Kitching. Hadji Wright had a late goal ruled out for offside as Cardiff hung on for a fifth win in seven. And they deserved that fifth win in seven as well. It was a really organised performance. The shape of the team was absolutely spot on. They kept Coventry City at arm's length. The Sky Blues couldn't get in behind them all afternoon. And they had the best chances as well, Cardiff City. They, in truth, they could have won this 3 or 4 one. Coventry surprisingly lacklustre. They just didn't play or move the ball at a fast enough tempo to disrupt a very, very good defensive performance from Cardiff City. If Coventry are going to go up this season, they have to play better than this. Well, they remain four points outside the playoffs with a game in hand. Leeds and Southampton, two tough games next for them. Coventry 1, Cardiff 2. Uh, we've got uh, all the full times are coming up very shortly. <clears throat> Carlisle haven't uh, won today, they've lost today, but they haven't been relegated just yet. Let's get full time at Swansea, Lawrence Mora. Where it finished, Swansea nil, QPR one. Rangers make it back-to-back wins on Easter weekend to give them clear water between them and the relegation zone. And the goal that won it was a collector's item from Steve Cook. 71 on the clock when the big centre-back adjusted his feet beautifully before dispatching a volley into the far corner of the home team's net. There were wild celebrations from the travelling fans. And that was partly because after creating the best chances in the first half, the London side were battered in the second period. Grimes and Sorinola hit the bar Yates should have scored from a header Cooper definitely should have done better with his weak finish and then right at the end Sorinola back post header was dreadful when in a terrific position Marty Fasuentes team have taken 13 points in 6 away games I'll be shocked if they're relegated this season Swansea with 47 points they should be OK but I'll be frustrated not to have finished it today Swansea nil, QPR 1 I'll give the uh, full picture in the uh, tables when we've done all the full time to stand by for that. Let's get full time at the Stadium of Light. Graham Courtney. Well, Sunderland 1, Blackburn Rovers 5. Sunderland actually started brightly in this game. Didn't matter, though. After 29 minutes, deadlock broken. The uh, Blackburn striker, Tyrese Dolan, well, he's roughly on the penalty spot, but rather than shoot, he squared it out to Sammy Smoddix and he blasted in across the face of the Sunderland goal. He got a second goal five minutes later as well. In the second half, well, only 90 seconds on the clock. Counter-attack by Blackburn. They really were pacing going forward. Sam Gallagher putting Ryan Hedges through. He's finished it very, very nicely for his second of the season. Uh, Sammy Smoddix, by the way, is up to 29 for this season. Another steady build-up ten minutes later and Hedges just through to Tyrese Dolan, he's finished into the bottom corner, Sunderland did get one back in the 77th minute, shot parried by Ainsley Pears, the goalkeeper for Rovers, it went straight into the path of Chris Rigg and he's just knocked it in from close range, but well the fight back, it didn't really uh, come to anything, quickly snuffed out, Andrew Moran making it five for Rovers, so the Blackburn boss John Eustace, he wins his first game since taking over and Rovers of course taking a giant step there towards safety. As for uh, Sunderland, well, my phone is awash with disgruntled messages from Mickey Gray. Uh, what a mess the owners are making of his football club. It's finished here at the Stadium of Light. Sunderland 1, Blackburn Rovers 5. Uh, talking to Mickey Gray, let's uh, head to his game at Bolton. Full-time whistle's just gone and loads of goals there, Mickey. Yes, yeah, certainly was, Adrian. It's finished here, Bolton 5 at Reading 2. Back to winning ways and now they put pressure on Portsmouth and Derby at the top of the table who played tomorrow 
watched by a crowd of over 25,000 here at the Tough Sheet Community Stadium. The first goal coming on 11 minutes through Aaron Collins, who ended up getting a hat-trick. Right foot from the edge of the box was he's probably the pick of the bunch. Super strike into the top corner to make up 1-0. The big surprise was the equaliser. Came from Lewis Wing. Absolutely super strike from him from the edge of the box as well on 40 minutes to make it 1-1. About as good as it got for Reading. But then just before half-time, Mbengi fouls Aaron Connells inside the penalty up box. On 48 minutes, Aaron Connells sticks the penalty away into the bottom corner. Come out in the second half, we didn't have to wait too long for the third goal for Bolton. John Bod Varson with his left foot from four yards out, assisted by McGoma. Good play down the right hand side, just had to slot the ball into the back of the net. Then on 76 minutes, Aaron Collins did get his hat trick. He fired the ball into the roof of the net, only from about six yards out. Again, they just click, couldn't clear their lines, Reading. And then you thought the game was over, but Reading gave them a little bit of a scare on 93 minutes. Paul Macari just came off the bench. Again, Bolton couldn't clear their lines, and Macari from a couple of yards out, they just poked the ball into the back of the net. But they wanted the final say in the game, and on 95 minutes, John Bud Varson got his second goal. Good play down the left-hand side. Bud Varson just had to slide in, and he did fire the ball into the roof of the net to see out a comfortable win for Bolton Wanderers. They now put pressure on Derby and Portsmouth in front of them. They're on 78 points. They're knocking on the door. They've got Portsmouth to play, and I think they've got to play Peterborough, Adrian, on the last day of the season. But a good day at the office for Ian Everett and Bolton Wanderers. They win here 5-2 against Reading. And it, you're absolutely spot on. It's uh, Peterborough Bolton final day of the season. Could be crucial, could be just to decide playoff places. Uh, let's find out what happened to the Pox this afternoon at Brisbane Road in League One. Alvin Martin and Ollie Klink. It finished here, Leighton Orient 1, Peterborough 2, Posh holding on to pick up an important win in that push for promotion. Hector Kiprianu and Efren Mason Clark put them in control, both goals coming in the first half. Orient got themselves back into it with 25 minutes to go through Ethan Galbraith, a wonderful volley from inside the box. And what a chance they had to equalise too. Dan Aguiai put a free header over the bar with five minutes left and really he should have done much better. Alvin Martin alongside me, Orient battled well in that second half but it was that excellent first half from Peterborough that got the job done yeah I think over the 90 minutes they were a lot better you know they looked like a division between the two of them Ollie to be fair uh, and it was only I mean the score line was 2-1 but you, you they could have had another 4 or 5 goals Peterborough mm. and, and I think the lessons to be learned I'm sure for Peterborough and Darren Ferguson will be telling them this you have to be more clinical they got into so many good positions great 4 on 4s 2 on 2s uh, in, in positions where they can supply and they didn't do it today but they did enough to win the game but I think going forward he'll want to see a lot more clinical finishing in terms of a final third. It's a big blow for Orient's playoff hopes. They stay 10th, nine points off sixth place. It means Peterborough move within seven points of the top two in League One and it's a win that further cements their position in the playoff places too. Full time here at Brisbane Road, Leighton Orient one, Peterborough two. And what a game in League Two at Meadow Lane for Talk Sports, Ian Abrams. Notts County 3, MK Dons 3 at 20 to 2. I was asked, set a challenge, could I get to Meadow Lane from Mansfield, whose game had been called off against Accrington Stanley? Well, with good traffic and a decent car park attendant who let me in, of course I could. And wow, was I pleased I made the effort. Dean gave MK Dons the lead after 19 minutes, a thunderous drive from 22 yards into the top corner, which Sam Austin equalised right on half time from two yards out, a scruffy goal goal. Jatta headed in his first Meadow Lane goal for Notts County to the home side of 2-1 lead, but Ellis Harrison was sent on by the MK Dons manager Mike Williamson and promptly scored twice. First set up eight yards out and then brilliantly set clear to chip deliciously over the goalkeeper with seven minutes to go. Was that to be the winner? No. Aaron Lemayne had been the man of the match and deservedly two minutes into added on time, of which there were six. He rammed in at the far post from Jody Jones' cross. The crowd enjoyed it. I don't think either the manager would have enjoyed it. I absolutely loved it. Finished MK Dons 3, that's County 3. Uh, it is TalkSport Game Day Live on Easter Monday, and TalkSport's the only place that brings you all the full time, so let's get a full classified check. This is Game Day. Full time classifieds. In the Championship, Leicester City 3, Norwich City 1, Birmingham City 1, Preston 0, Coventry 1, Cardiff 2, Middlesbrough 2, Sheffield Wednesday 0, Plymouth 0, Bristol City 1, Rotherham 2, Millwall 1, Stoke 1, Huddersfield 1, Sunderland 1, Blackburn 5, Swansea 0, QPR 1, West Brom 2, Watford 2, Ipswich Southampton at 5.30 and Leeds United against Hull City at 8 are both live and exclusive on TalkSport. In League 1, Blackpool 0, Wickham 0, 
Bolton 5, Reading 2, Bristol Rovers 0, Shrewsbury 0, Burton 1, Barnsley 3, Cambridge 3, Wigan 1, Carlisle 1, Lincoln 3, Charlton 0, Stevenage 0, Cheltenham 1, Exeter 2, Leighton Orient 1, Peterborough 2, Northampton 2, Port Vale 0, Oxford United 4, Fleetwood 0. In League 2, Grimsby 1, Bradford 1, Crew 0, Forest Green 3, Harrogate 5, Gillingham 1, Mansfield against Accrington, match postponed. Morecambe 2, Barrow 1, Newport 0, Crawley 4, Notts County 3, MK Dons 3, Stockport 1, AFC Wimbledon 0, Sutton United 3, Swindon 1, Tranmere 1, Colchester 1, Walsall 2, Salford 1. In the National League, AFC filed against Gateshead, match postponed. Aldershot 1, Dorking 1, Altrincham 1, Oldham 0, Barnet 3, Oxford City 1, Bromley 1, Woking 1, Chesterfield 1, Kidderminster 3, Dagenham and Redbridge 1, Ebbsfleet 1, Eastleigh 2, Maidenhead 3, FC Halifax Town against York City, match postponed, they'll play tomorrow night. Rochdale 1, Hartlepool 1, Southend 4, Boreham Wood 2, Wealdstone 0, Solio Moors 1. In the National League North, Bishop Stalford 3, Banbury United 1, Brackley Town 3, Tamworth 0, Chester 0, Alfreton 2, Chorley 2, Blythe Spartans 0, Curzon Ashton 2, South Shields 0, Hereford 2, Buxton 2, Kings Lynn 3, Scarborough Athletic 4, Peterborough Sports 1, Gloucester City 0, Rush All Olympic 1, Boston United 0, Southport 0, Scunthorpe 1, Spennymore 3, Farsley Celtic 1, Warrington 1, Darlington 3, National League South, Weymouth were leading Yeovil 1-0 when the game was abandoned due to an emergency in the away end, Averley 1, Haberden Waterlooville 2, Braintree 2, Hemel Hempstead Town 0, Chippenham 0, Truro 0, that match is still going on, Dartford 0, Eastbourne Borough 2, Dover 1, Chelmsford City 0, Maidstone 1, Welling 1, Slough Town 2, St Albans City 2, Taunton Town 0, Bath City 2, Tombridge Angels 1, Farnborough 2, Torquay 3, Western Supermare 3, and Worthing 2, Hampton and Richmond Borough 0. Game Day. The greatness, the goals and the glory. Game Day Live on Talk Sports. It's Easter Monday, it's TalkSport taking you around the grounds, bringing you all the goals as they go in as we come to crunch time in the season in the EFL. Sammy Smodix made that now 29 goals for this season, his second of the afternoon, Sunderland 0, Blackburn 2. It's Coventry City 1, Cardiff City 0 and it's no great surprise, Ellis Sims who has scored it. Quality at the Hawthorns, Alex Crook. 52 minutes gone, West Brom 0, Watford 1. Wow, Sunderland 0, Blackburn Rovers Four. It's Coventry 1, Cardiff 2, so the Bluebirds have turned this around, and it's another own goal. Keanu Hoover! 2-2 two two for Keanu Hoover, and Stoke a level! And West Brom are right back in it, Alex Crook. They are indeed, 20 minutes to save themselves, it's West Brom 1, Watford 2, Swansea 0, QPR 1, what a huge goal for the visitors as well, and it was Steve Cook, the centre-back, who got it. 77 on the clock, it's all over here Adrian Bolton for Reading 1 and it's Aaron Connons with his hat trick and it is Sunderland 1 Blackburn Rovers 5 Middlesbrough 2 Sheffield Wednesday 0 the Borough double their lead and it's another sensational goal West Brom 2 Watford 2 Darnell Furlong up from the back has just absolutely smashed home from 20 yards out second half here at the Hawthorns has just been a goal of the season in competition, extraordinary stuff. It really was a cracking second half here at the Hawthorns. And what a day in the EFL in the Championship. Big wins at the bottom for Birmingham, Blackburn and QPR. Playoff chasing Norwich, Coventry and Preston all lost. While here at the Hawthorns, West Brom needed to come from two down uh, to draw 2-2 with Watford. Four brilliant goals in the second half after a very forgetful first half. And earlier, live on TalkSport 2, Leicester City. 1-3-1 1-3-1 came from behind against Norwich to go top of the table ahead of big games that are coming up. Ipswich Southampton coming up at 5.30. We've got that live here on Talk Sport and at 8 o'clock Leeds against Hull. So let's tell you how the table looks. Championship, Leicester are top on 85. Ipswich a second on 84. Leeds a third on 83. They've all played 39 games as it stands. Southampton have played 37 games. They're on 74 points. 10 points off automatic promotion. And the playoff places is beyond that. West Brom are fifth on 68. Norwich are sixth on 64. 
Coventry are just outside the playoffs on 60 points. They remain four points behind Norwich. So a lucky escape for Norwich, really. Preston on 59, and then Hull on 58. Middlesbrough are on 58. Are they back in the playoff mix? One wonders. And Cardiff on 56. Down at the bottom, Rotherham got a rare win. It saved them from relegation today. It's not been confirmed. It will be confirmed, though. They are going to be going down, but just not yet. They're on 23 points. They've matched the lowest ever points tally in the championship which is a record they set in 2017 they remain bottom they will be heading down above them Sheffield Wednesday lost they're on 39 Huddersfield on 40 and then above the dotted line Plymouth lost again they're on 41 Birmingham on 42 a big win for them under Gary Rout today Millwall on 44 lost at Rotherham and Stoke and Blackburn both on 45 points in League One at the top of the table Portsmouth play Derby tomorrow night Bolton and Peter have closed the gap. Bolton on 78, three points behind Derby after a big win against Reading. Posh won at Orient by two goals to one. Next up for them is the EFL Trophy Final next Sunday. Uh, that is at Wembley and it's live on TalkSport 2. The remaining playoff places are taken by Barnsley, who came from behind for a win today, and Lincoln, who won yet again, and they're ahead of Oxford on goal difference in that final playoff spot. Down at the bottom, Carlisle, not quite relegated, but they will be. They're on 27. Fleetwood on 34, lost again. Cheltenham on 38, led but lost. Port Vale on 39. Their two-match winning run came to an end. They lost today. They're a point behind Burton, who were leading but lost today. Cambridge won again, and they're five points above Burton Albion, so you're thinking it's four from the bottom five that will be going down. In League Two, Stockport got a late winner there. Four points clear at the top of the table. Uh, Mansfield on 73, Wrexham on 73, and MK Dons on 71 after Notts County's late equaliser. They're in the uh, top playoff spot. Barrow behind them, four points behind them in fifth. Crew in six, lost again, and Crawley in seventh, two points ahead of Morecambe and Gillingham. And down at the bottom, Sutton United are out of the bottom two. They're out of the relegation places under Steve Morrison after a fourth straight win. And in the bottom two are Forest Green Rovers, who got a big win today away from home at Crew Alexandra, but they remain bottom. They're on 36, Colchester on 38, Sutton United are on 39. In the National League, we know Chesterfield are champions, but they keep losing. They're uh, on 95. And at the bottom, it's Oxford City who are relegated. Dorking second bottom. Borehamwood third bottom. Kidderminster with a win at Chesterfield, but they stay in the bottom four. A point behind Wilston, who conceded a late goal to lose and home to Solihull Moors this afternoon. So you're up to date with the tables and all the results on Game Day Live on TalkSport. TalkSport Breakfast with Arnold Clark. Sell your car with no admin fees, any make or model. Get all your must-haves this Ramadan at Asda. From a suhoor to get out of bed for, with Lancashire Farm natural yoghurt for £1.60, to sunset reunions you'll rush home for, with 1.8 kilograms of Shazan's fresh chicken breast down to £11.20. We've got every Ramadan moment covered, so you can concentrate on what really matters. Asda. That's more like it. Selected stores and lines subject to availability may exclude Asda Express and small stores. See asda.com forward slash small stores. The greatness, the goals and the glory. Game day live on Talk Sports. Oh, what a big day in the uh, EFL. Big day at the top because Leicester have gone top. We've got two live commentaries coming up on TalkSport. Ipswich Southampton kicks off in just over 10 minutes. We'll be at Portman Road very shortly. And after that, Leeds against Hull. But a quick reflection on what's gone on this afternoon and the playoff mix in the championship. Let's bring in Adrian Clark, who's watched Coventry lose at home to Cardiff. Not a lot of us saw that going on, but... They got lucky because Preston behind them lost as well. Norwich above them lost. They've missed a big chance to close that gap on Norwich though, Adrian. Yeah. What went wrong? Yeah, huge missed opportunity. They, they didn't get going. They started the game fantastically. They looked a really... Uh, they looked a top side in the first 15 minutes, moving it quickly, creating chances. But then... They coasted and they didn't seem to push themselves. It was almost as if they felt that they were going to cruise to, to a win. Even when, when uh, Cardiff City levelled it, it, it felt like they, they just assumed that they'll find a way to win the game. And before they knew it, they were 2-1 down. And then suddenly the gear change happened and we saw a much better tempo towards the end. A little bit of desperation and all of a sudden things started to happen for Coventry City but it, it wasn't their day they had a bit of bad luck the goal that, that won it for Cardiff City took a double deflection from Bowler's Cross off, off the left back and then the centre half so you know they'll look at that and say we were unfortunate but on the balance of play I'd like to credit Cardiff City this was an excellent defensive team performance from them um, they haven't got many goal scorers, Cardiff City. Perry NG, the right back, is their top scorer on six. Well, he's been joined now by a joint leading scorer, and that's OG. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> own goal. Brilliant. Uh, superb. Um, Adrian, it's been a joy to have you on the show uh, today, despite the Arsenal stuff. Thanks very much. Yes, yes, uh, <laughs> one wonders if the uh, FA Cup semi finalist Coventry are just lulling Manchester United into a false sense of security. Alvin Martin's been at the League One game at Brisbane Road with a posh got back to winning ways after that defeat to Carlisle on uh, Friday, and they needed to uh, as well. With Bolton winning as well, just keep that little bit of pressure on the top two Portsmouth play Derby tomorrow night but a better performance from Peterborough ahead of Wembley on Sunday Alvin yeah absolutely they played some really good stuff Adrian and uh, you know the way they do knock the ball about you, you would have thought Wembley would suit them as well because uh, from the back they, they get the ball out well you will know Edwards and Knight comfortable on the ball as centre halves travelled with it uh, they, 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 they found themselves in the in the in in the attacking third a lot the two centre-halves and the, the two wide players did ever so well they, they knocked it down they dominated midfield but you know what they could have drawn this game in the end uh, it, it, up, up against a, a, a late Orient side Adrian who've been struggling to score goals they had a header that they missed uh, right at the end uh, and, it, and, and you know RJ should really score uh, so I think you know they, 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 they will have looked at that uh, certainly Ferguson will be looking at it and saying look if we aren't clinical you know at Wembley uh, we, we'll lose a game but they're certainly good enough to create chances are they good enough to stick them away and kill games off we shall see Alvin's been great to be with you on uh, Easter Monday thank you very much Alvin Martin at Brisbane Road uh, we're going to be off to Portman Road next on Talk Sports Talk Sport Breakfast with Arnold Clark get the UK's best used car deals guaranteed and here's Rory McIlroy on the 18th at Augusta and here it goes Surely not. Some things are worth shouting about. Watch all nine majors, starting with the Masters, live on Sky Sports. Get all of Sky Sports for £22 extra a month. See sky.com for details. Price fixed for 18 month minimum term. New 18 month contract for Sky TV required. Further terms apply. Imagine a place where you can escape for a day. Get immersed in a world of rooms, inspiration and expertise, where you can laze in luxury accommodation. And kids can feast from 95 pence. Tickets are free to everyone this Easter and include all the attractions. You've just imagined a day out at IKEA. IKEA, the wonderful everyday. Businesses across the land, whatever kind of business you're in, BT's got your back. We're talking small business, big business, new business, old business. Top secret business? Well, that's your business. But yes, global business, serious business, family business. What about show business? Yes, all the businesses. So whatever your business, let us take care of business with our secure and reliable connectivity. BT's got your back. Search BT's got your back. It's the speed. It's the competition. It's all or nothing. Team Sport Indoor Karting. With adrenaline fueled action on every straight, rampant corner. It's where you, your mates and colleagues can be champions for the day. It's the ultimate karting experience. With 35 tracks nationwide, there's a Team Sport track near you. Book online and save 10% with the code GET10 at team-sport.co.uk. Want to build the bet you want in seconds? With Unibet's Bet Builder, you're on. Add shots, corners, cards, and more. And increase your odds with Bet Builder Rackers, combining Bet Builders across multiple games and sports. Download the Unibet app or visit unibet.co.uk and get a Bet Builder boost every day. Unibet. You're on. 18 plus B gamble aware.org. Pre match only. Max state £10 minimum. Combined odds of 4 to 1 and 3 selections. T's and C's apply. Monday night. Live Championship football on Talk Sports. Oh, it's in. Get stuck in. Leeds United versus Hull. Meet up in the car park. Come 6. Kick off 8 o'clock. Rock. No one else brings you more. Monday night on Talk Sport. It's April and it's a mega month on the TalkSport network. We have got over 50 live commentaries for you. There's loads of live exclusive Premier League games, including all the midweek games, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all live and exclusive on the TalkSport network. Some of them only available on the TalkSport app, so get that onto your phone or your tablet. And we've got Champions League, Europa League, and of course, we're the only national radio station that brings you commentaries from the EFL. Our commitment to the EFL is unquestionable. 
and Ipswich can go top of the table if they beat Southampton in what is a huge game. Second against fourth is coming up live on TalkSport. You're listening to the EFL on TalkSport with McDonald's. Order Mac delivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty rewards points. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. Uh, Dean Ashton is at Portman Road and the atmosphere at Portman Road has been brilliant all season. The fans have come back in numbers given the success they're having under Kieran McKenna. And I would imagine, describe it for me, the atmosphere there ahead of second against fourth and a chance for town to go top. Well, it's electric, electric exactly what you would imagine. I remember coming here years ago, Aidan, playing. I always thought, what a stadium, what an atmosphere they used to create. And they'd lost that. They'd lost the soul of the club almost for years. But it is back. And honestly... With the clocks changing, that extra bit of sunshine we've got over on that far side with the away fans and the Ipswich fans and the noise and the atmosphere. And I think the expectation is different, Aid, now. And you can sense it here. They they realise that they've got a chance of doing something quite incredible and upsetting almost, upsetting the odds by, uh, by going up automatically. Um, and if they win against Southampton, it's almost like they're knocking away another challenger um, today with Russell Martin's side and, and I think they realise how big and important this game is. When I look at the Ipswich 11, possibly with the exception of Lee Davis, I look at it and think there's no players there that really smack you in the face as Premier League players waiting to happen and that's not a criticism of them. In fact, it's a compliment to them and to their coaches brought together a really good effective team. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think that's a, a, a bad thing to say because you know these these are some players that have started out in in League One and are now looking at the Premier League. It's been done before by by plenty of players, um, and that can come from confidence. It could come from great coaching and improvement as players and and as a team. But you're you're right. I, I think all of these players, if they were to get promoted, it's about proving themselves then in the Premier League. I don't think anyone would expect them to go and, and be incredible, but they could. And I think, you know, to be able to believe in yourself as a player from a, from a League One player to now be looking and, and thinking we could get promoted into the Premier League instead of possible clubs like Leeds, Leicester and, and Southampton um, just shows how far they've come in, in such a short space of time. Uh, I look at Southampton, we talked earlier about how disappointed Russ Martin would have been conceding that late equaliser against uh, Middlesbrough on Friday, not taking chances at one end and defending badly at the other end. One thing he also did was he took off his front three at 1-0 and, and I wonder if he might think maybe I made a mistake there. Adam Armstrong, Che Adam, Suleimana all went off and I just wonder if he, he won't make that, if it was a mistake, if he won't do that again. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he, if he felt that way. Um, and as managers, you you know you make these calls. I was at Newcastle at the weekend when David Moyes made the call to make a change, and it went horribly wrong. And they must, it must, you know, it must weigh on them. I'm sure the managers when they make these decisions. Um, today it feels like it's not a day to tinker. This is a game that you can't take lightly. I think you've got, you need your best players. You need them at their absolute peak if you're going to win this game because to come away to Ipswich, to here at Portman Road. If you want a result, you are going to have to put in one hell of a performance. And they were bullied at St Mary's. I was there earlier on in the season when Russell Martin was, was booed at half-time. And, um, and they physically bullied Southampton. So it's going to be interesting, I think, without Walker-Peters in the side, Harwood, Bellis, Stevens, Bednarek, Bree, that looks like a more physical back four. And I think they need to be ready for that. Well, Leeds Hull at 8 o'clock is later, live and exclusive and only on TalkSport. But before that, let's take you to Portman Road on TalkSport. Ipswich against Southampton, second against fourth. Saints need to win it. Town go top if they win it. Here's the former England striker, Dean Ashton, and alongside your commentator on TalkSport, Joe Shannon. Thanks, Adrian. Good afternoon, everyone. Ahead of the next step in a championship promotion race that is one of the best in living memory. A win will take Ipswich back to the top as they seek a return to the Premier League after more than 20 years away. Not since the 1960s and the Sir Ralph Ramsey days have they won back-to-back -back promotions from the third tier to the top flight. The last team to achieve that feat were Southampton in 2012. Russell Martin's team are 10 points behind Ipswich which at the start of the game, and although they've got two games in hand, surely Southampton must win to keep their automatic promotion hopes going. 
So Ipswich have Ladke in goal, Twansebi, Wolfenden, Burgess and Davis in defence, Morsi and Luongo holding, Jackson, Chaplin and Hutchinson in support of Moore up front. For Southampton, it's Bazunu in goal, Harwood, Bellis, Stevens, Bednarek and Bree, Downs, formerly of Ipswich, Aribo and Stuart Armstrong in midfield, Adam Armstrong, Adams and Fraser are the front three. Bright sunshine in Suffolk today. And blue skies up ahead too. Lots of replica shirts on show at the start of spring. The start of a wonderful month of April to come on the Talk Sport Network with more than 50 live commentaries. Ipswich against Southampton, Dean Ashton. We've smuggled you in. Former Norwich striker has made the trip to Portman Road. I tell you what though, Dean, this could be something special. It could be. Yeah, you've snuck me in, but I don't mind being I don't mind being here because actually Ipswich have been fantastic to watch. They've been entertaining. They've they're they're different to a Leeds and Leicester. They've conceded way more goals in uh, in their games. I think and, and they've shown that they can come back from adversity. So even if Southampton would get off to a, a good start and take the lead, you wouldn't write this Ipswich team off. But for me, if Southampton don't win this game, I think that could be automatic promotion over for Southampton. I think their I think automatic promotion charge has to start today. It has to start with a win to close that gap on Ipswich. And memories of Southampton's club record unbeaten run between late September and mid-February have faded now. Three defeats in their last seven championship games. Though, of course, if they miss out on automatic promotion, you'd expect them to be fully ensconced in the playoff picture. Ipswich, eight wins from nine. Losing just once in that time, so the memories for them of the wobble in and around Christmas and the early part of the new year seem a distant memory now. And Portman Road is rocking and roaring these days to the sound of Ipswich success under Kieran McKenna, still just 37 years of age, the manager of the Northern Irishman, a formerly first-team coach at Manchester United. He learned under Jose Mourinho and he really is setting out his stall, Kieran McKenna, as one of the best young coaches around. And I'm sure there'll be many who'll give similar sorts of praise to Russell Martin for the job he's done at Southampton. Yeah, it's, it's I think, the big chance, isn't it, for Russell Martin. He's done very well. His style of football is there for everyone to see at every club he's been at. Same with Southampton. First for average possession in the league this season. They will keep hold of the ball, I'm sure, even here. So Leicester rose back to the summit earlier. Ipswich can leapfrog them again with a win here. And don't forget, it's Leeds against Hull at 8 o'clock. While Southampton in fourth are desperate for a win to try and keep pace with the automatic promotion chases. It really is going to be some ride between now and the end of the season. It's crunch time. The only place to be is talk sport. Southampton have got the game off and underway on a lovely late afternoon, right at the start of spring. As I say... Uh, slithered the field of play, the far side of the field and the cobbled stand in the bright sunshine. Southampton in there. Uh, red shirts, black shorts and white socks playing from right to left in the first half and Ipswich in blue and white from left to right. And an early touch at the heart of defence for Jan Bednarek, who is back fit and able to start today for Southampton. He gets the ball back from the goalkeeper, Gavin Bazunu. And here is Stuart Armstrong, who's peeled away into the left-back position for Southampton. He gallops up the near side, the left. Caden Jackson, one of two players to come into the Ipswich team today after their win at Blackburn on Good Friday, comes across. And Ipswich have a throw in the right-back position. We are right at the back of the main stand here. A steep drop of three tiers to the touchline below I can see Russell Martin and Kieran McKenna already issuing instructions after what has been a dramatic day once again in the EFL and the championship in particular Leicester 3 Norwich 1 in the 12.30 kickoff live on TalkSport 2 so Leicester top of the table for now Ipswich in second they would need a win to go back to the summit and Leeds promotion chasing take on Hull who still have hope of the playoffs at Ellen Road later on. Southampton on the ball with Downs, formerly of Ipswich, back to the halfway line, and Harwood Bellis finds Bednarek, and Harwood Bellis in the centre circle steers the ball forward to the feet of Arivo. Midway inside Ipswich territory, Adam Armstrong, 19 goals in the championship so far this season, the joint second top scorer in the league coming into the weekend. Just looking at the 
Southampton shape early on here, Dean Ashton. How have they lined up? Nil, nil, two minutes gone. Well, we wondered sort of where, you know, Bednarek, Harwood, Bellis and Stevens would fit in. Well, Stevens has actually drifted into a, a midfield area so far. Whether that's when Southampton have the ball and he'll drop them back into a left-back position, which he has done now without the ball. So we'll keep an eye on on that side of things. And as for Ipswich, Hutchinson has actually started on the left with Jackson on the right. And we'll just see how often Jackson can get alongside Moore, or even beyond him. I think that's going to be important for Keeper Moore to have that support as the lone striker. Here is Wolfenden at the heart of the Ipswich back line. Born in Ipswich. Out to the near side, the right, the right back to Ansebi. Good ball by Chaplin up the inside right channel. Well intercepted by uh, Bednarek. He was looking for the pace of Caden Jackson on the inside right channel. And on the flanks today, Ipswich, in the shape of Jackson and Hutchinson, there is plenty of that pace in support of Kiefer Moore, the six foot five inch centre forward. Ipswich have won it back up the field. Moore in the left wing position in the bright sunshine. Crosses left footed, it rebounds off Aribo, and then the header clear into touch and out of play by James Bree. And that's a throw to Ipswich deep inside Southampton territory. Goalless early on here, live on Talk Sports. And it's the start of our. A Premier League programme, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights, all ten Premier League matches, live and exclusive with us on the Talk Sport Network. And Premier League is where Ipswich and Southampton hope to be next season. Leif Davis will take a throw, far side, in front of the cobbled stand. He's very close to where the Southampton fans are, most of them just above him in the upper tier. And he'll hoist this in towards the near post. And maybe an early test coming up for Southampton and goalkeeper Bazunu Into the near post and it's headed away. Firmly by Harwood Billis out towards the far side by the Manchester City low knee. And Ipswich have a throw which Davis takes quickly back to Wolfenden. And Ipswich enjoying much of the early possession which is unlike Southampton. As Jackson looks to get in behind a raking ball downfield by Wolfenden in the end is claimed by Bazuna. Well I wonder whether they will look for that ball over the top of Stevens if he does drift into midfield when Ipswich win it back. And there they were just trying to get Jackson in behind. Stevens he won the header but no one supporting him and no surprise whatsoever to see Sam Morsey give a free kick away <laughs> 12 bookings so far this season yeah. you're going to you're going to play the, the the Morsey role today with this oh, yeah. huge steel post in the way your head is yes. going to be on the swivel like in midfield and are you waiting for the knockdowns? I'm not sure how <laughs> yes. I fit that in but <laughs> there is a big pillar in the way but it's a ground of great character Portman Road and Ipswich with a wonderful run of fixtures between now and the end of the season, including the East Anglian derby, where Dean will be next Saturday lunchtime for TalkSport 2. Free kick to Southampton, near side the left, midway into Ipswich territory, floated in by Bree, headed away by Turansebi. You can't write off Southampton completely yet in terms of the race for the top two because they'll have a couple of games in hand after tonight. And that really is what's keeping them in contention. They conceded a 90th-minute equaliser against Middlesbrough on Good Friday. That was a big blow for them. But they go again here, away at one of the most impressive sides in the EFL this season. Ipswich Town, who will go top with a victory. Bednarek for Southampton, edge of his own penalty area. Square ball to Harwood Bellis, who has started at centre-half alongside Bednarek. And Bednarek with the orange boots on, looks to bring the ball out of defence. Forward pass to Adams, and his ball is not controlled by his team, and it's given away to Chaplin. Chaplin throws it down the right-hand side. Jackson pulls it back, little touch back to the goalkeeper, off downs. And it wasn't so much a back pass, just as an interception. And Bazunu was able to sprawl upon the ball before it could reach Amari Hutchinson. Well won back though by Morsi in the centre circle. Morsi's ball down the middle is given away. And Southampton can break here with Stuart Armstrong drifting over the halfway line. Wide to the left-hand side and Ryan Fraser. And now Stevens plays it forward to Adam Armstrong, who's just inside the Ipswich half. Ipswich nil, Southampton nil. Lively first six minutes from the home team in particular. And they really do feel like they're feeding off the atmosphere here. Yeah, of course, the energy, the pressing has been good so far from Ipswich. And that is going to be a problem if Stevens, when they lose the ball, is out of position and that... Left back position is totally free. They just didn't make the most of it there. Jackson with the ball back towards Keeper Moore. I was amazed he let it go, to be honest. And now Stevens, the captain, driving forward up to the midway point of the Ipswich half. Adams with the ball out to Adam Armstrong. Infield from the right, left footed effort. Thunders into the back of Cameron Burgess. And Ipswich have possession back. 
and a sense of calm suddenly restored to Portman Road after the brief nerves following that Southampton attack. Ipswich, who have scored freely this season, been so resilient, plenty of late goals and goals off the bench. Two of the best sides in terms of easiness on the eye in the Championship this season. Ipswich nil, Southampton nil. Here is Stuart Armstrong again for Southampton. Near side the left, blocked off by Twansebi. And there's a free kick that's been given to Ipswich now in their right-back position. Ipswich nil, Southampton nil in the EFL Championship on TalkSport with McDonald's. Order muck delivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty rewards points, 18+. plus terms and conditions apply. Morsi under pressure inside his own penalty area. Plays it back to goalkeeper Hladki, all in green. Hladki clatters the ball up to the halfway line. It's met by the firm chest of Bednarek to thunder it back into Ipswich territory. And now Armstrong, Stuart Armstrong, right in front of the dugouts. Reverse ball infield to Downs. Lovely first touch to glide away from Luongo, but then he steers the right-footed shot wide of the near post against his old club. Yeah, Stuart Armstrong started really well. His movement's been nice and sharp, really nice first touch from him. Lovely creative reverse ball in towards Downs, who had made the run from that deep-lying midfield role. The touch was great to start with, out of his feet. Strike was truly awful, just dragging it horribly wide. When maybe a little bit of combination there on the edge of the penalty area might have been better. A high quality, high tempo start. Two proceedings here in Suffolk. The ball is with Moore dropping 10 yards into his own half to steer it with his back to goal out to the left hand side and leave Davis, who's proven himself one of the best fullbacks in the championship. Davis floats the ball high down the left wing, and Luongo on that far side will chase it and get to it in front of the defender. Luongo's got an option to pull it back across. He does in the end to Davis, who steers it wide. First time left-footed from an infield position, Dean Ashton. Yeah, very good run from Luongo. I think more so, though, the Morsi, he will go and drift and, and run from that midfield area. Just found that space down the left-hand side, did the right thing back to Leif Davis, and it was just the angle, really, that he was running at. He was running very straight at the ball. Always going to be difficult to then angle that towards goal without dragging it wide. So a point for Ipswich. Takes them level on points with Leicester, though Leicester would stay leaders, courtesy of goal difference. And, of course, if it were to finish 0-0, or if Ipswich were to be beaten, then Leeds would have the chance to go top with a win over Hull City at 8 o'clock live on Talk Sport, live from Elland Road. It really is going to be some end to the championship season. Busy day today. Birmingham 1, Preston 0, big win for Birmingham City. Coventry beaten at home in the race for the playoffs by Cardiff. As Jackson crosses for Ipswich, Moore with his back to goal. Can he spin? He turned, he laid it off towards Tuan Serbi, but he was blocked off in the end by Bednarek. And then it's scooped downfield by Adam Armstrong for Che Adams to t chase. That should be easy for Hladki. And the goalkeeper keeps very calm on the edge of his own penalty area. Just a first-time pass with his right foot to the feet of the Australian Burgess and Ipswich can look to build again here. Ten minutes gone and goalless. Yeah, keep them all. I think that's an area you can improve on. Obviously very, very good at attacking across, but when that ball comes in low to his feet, it looks like he doesn't quite have the ideas of either pinning the defender, rolling and shifting and shooting himself or looking to lay off smartly, quickly there. He just sort of got it stuck under his feet wasn't quite sure of what to do and those are the moments where really he should be using his physicality to the advantage of his team. Middlesbrough 2, Sheffield Wednesday a full-time score, Sheffield Wednesday still in the bottom three, Plymouth one point clear of the drop zone after being beaten at home by Bristol City earlier, Southampton on the attack with the number 10 Adams, midway inside Ipswich territory goes back towards the halfway line, a gesture of calm from Bednarek as Downs, very culture midfield player. Number four, picks the ball up on the halfway line again. Southampton, a very good possession team. And they score plenty of goals, just like Ipswich. We saw the standard, remarkable standard set by Southampton during their 25-game unbeaten run earlier this season. A rebo infield from the right-wing position. Blue against red tonight, and still nil-nil. Rotherham 2, Millwall 1, a full-time score from earlier. Rotherham lived to fight another day. Ryan Fraser delivers high left-footed for Southampton, headed away by Burgess from the edge of the six-yard box, and now Chaplin, the lively Chaplin, tries to bring it down, quickly shrugged aside by Downs, and Southampton, with a great sense of confidence on the ball, win it back again, and it's a rebo on the far side, the right for them. Back to Bree, and now Harwood Bellis inside the centre circle, and this is where Southampton can really kill sides with this relentless possession, 
Teams can get frustrated. Wolfenden stepped out of defence though to win it back for Hutchinson. Hutchinson looks to drive in field from the left-hand side for Ipswich. And now Moore on the edge of the D. Thought about a shot. Quickly wide to Jackson. Jackson pulls it back towards the far post. Cleared away. Only as far as Morsi, who's brought it down neatly on his right foot. Morsi's crossfield ball. He picks out Davis. Left on edge of the penalty area. Oh, he's found the corner. He's beaten Gavin Bazunu. And Davis has lashed Ipswich Town in front. They're heading back to the top of the championship in the latest twist in this remarkable promotion race. Davis hammered it goalwards and Bazunu, what it seemed to go through his hands possibly, the goalkeeper there may be unsighted. It is Ipswich Town 1, Southampton 0. Well, he's so used to having a big, fat capital A next to his name. He's the assist king, is Leif Davis, but not today. Not with that left foot. It's the power, I think, that beats Bazunu. Or is it? He looks a little bit embarrassed. Is it because he's trying to fire this across? And does he shank it towards the top corner? Or am I doing him a disservice? I am. I think it's just poor, pure, raw power. Sometimes people say, well, the goalkeeper's been beaten on his near post. I'm sorry. When the ball travels that fast, right into the top near corner, you cannot stop it. You just can't react quick enough. What a wonderful strike from Davis. So Ipswich heading top. Leif Davis, the scorer. His second of the season, scored a couple of important goals at Portman Road now this campaign. And it's Ipswich 1, Southampton 0, live on Talk Sport with just under 15 minutes played and the roar of the home supporters. Up the Football League we go. It's the chant from the Ipswich fans. They're heading for the Premier League as it stands. Here comes Southampton, though, straight on the counter from kickoff. It's Adam Armstrong back to Arivo inside the box. He poked it goalwards and then it's turned in by Adams. Southampton fight back straight away. And suddenly Portman Road is silenced. Che Adams gets a poacher's goal. And Southampton were behind for less than 60 seconds. Ipswich won, Southampton won. What a response. This is from Southampton. So well worked, honestly. One and two, touch play. Fizzed it across, a rebo out towards Adam Armstrong. He then looks as if he's going to fire it in behind the defence. He doesn't, he cuts it back to a rebo. And then Che Adams, for the whole world, looks offside. But he's not because Leif Davis just steps back into position or Burgess, one of the two, and he's kept him on side. But that's what you do as a striker. You goal hang. You wait around that six-yard line. If the ball falls, you finish it. He was calm enough just to slot it to the left-hand side of Ladke to make it 1-1. And so Ipswich drop back down to second and Leicester resume their place at the top of the championship, at least for now. But this is a measure of the twists and turns that are going to come between now and the end of the season in the second tier. And the only place to hear live and exclusive national radio commentaries is the Talk Sport Network. It's 1-1. Southampton are level again, straight away. And Ipswich thunder the ball downfield through Wolfenden. I pity anybody who thought this was going to be nil-nil today. These are two of the best sides in the division when it comes to going forward. Here is Adam Armstrong on the far side of the right and Southampton keep up their excellent scoring record in the championship only failed to score twice this season tearing down the far side of the right is Downs and he's tripped, he's fouled in a dangerous position yellow card out of the pocket of the referee for Morsi, that trademark yellow card 13th of the league season and Southampton have a free kick within shooting range towards the right hand edge of the penalty area 1-1, what a game this is already Dean Ashton <laughs> fantastic start isn't it everything that you would expect from two high level opponents and I think it just makes him feel warm, doesn't it, Morsi, that yellow card? It's almost like he, he can't properly get started, but sometimes he knows when to make those fouls. And that was one of those moments, because Downs, if he was able to carry on even further, was either shooting himself or just laying it across to Adam Armstrong for him to shoot. Leif Davis put Ipswich in front. Che Adams with an instant reply, and the score is 1-1. Earlier today in the Championship, Stoke won, Huddersfield won. Huddersfield stay in the bottom three. Big win for Blackburn at Sunderland, first for John Eustace as manager. Huge win for QPR at Swansea that takes them six points clear and it finished West Brom two, Watford two. Free kick on the far side, the right. Corner of the penalty area, James Bree is standing over it for Southampton. He goes for goal and it's just wide. 
tried to swing it across towards the near post in the end. That nearly caught out everybody inside the 18-yard area. Goalkeeper Hladki was sprawling and it drifted narrowly behind for a goal kick to Ipswich. It's, it is one of those that it looks like it was a shot, but it could easily have been a, a cross. It flashed right across Hladki, who in the end I think just pulled his arms away. I think knowing the angle that the ball was curling away from. But what a response from Southampton to score straight away and not let that goal affect them. Very impressive. Remember, Southampton really need a win to keep up their hopes of automatic promotion realistically. Long ball, pumped upfield by Hladki, the goalkeeper, high towards the left-wing position. Davis driving forward, beaten to it by Aribo. And the ball is back in the gloves of the Southampton goalkeeper, Gavin Bazunu, in his multicoloured goalkeeping shirt. Stevens. Back to Bednarek, who hoists it high downfield up towards Adams. The header away by Wolfenden for Ipswich. And now Bree in possession. To the right of the three centre-halves when Southampton have the ball, the former Luton man James Bree. And now Arivo hugging that far side touchline on the uh, right-hand side. Southampton go back into their own penalty area. They will play neatly through the thirds and they start to dart upfield again. Back it goes to Bednarek. Midway inside his own half of the field and Ipswich will have to of course, be aware that they'll go long spells without possession in the game. Luongo snapped in to win it back in the centre circle, but then gives it straight to a red shirt. Bree and Ipswich only had the ball back for a few seconds. They did win at St Mary's in the reverse fixture back in the autumn. A rare time, as I say, where Southampton failed to find the back of the net. Ipswich won, Southampton won in the 19th minute with Leeds against Hull City to come later in the championship on Talk Sport. If it stayed like this, Leeds would have the chance to go top. So we'd have three separate leaders of the championship in one day. <laughs> Here is Fraser darting up the inside left channel for Southampton, edge of the penalty area, floats in the cross, Aribo brings it down far post. Oh, he thought about the shot, then just think about curling it left-footed onto his right. That's blocked by Davis. It'll drop in the area for Adam Armstrong, and he tried to hammer it goalwards. It took a big deflection. It'll go behind for what is given as a goal kick by the referee, Michael Salisbury. Well, I'm not quite sure how that happened. Tuanes Aby was out of position, ball down the line towards Fraser. Fantastic little cut back, chipped cross towards Aribo. Probably could have taken it first time once he took it down. Lovely bit of skill, but you've got to get your shot away earlier there if you're Joe Aribo. You've done the hard bit of sitting down, Luongo. Get that shot away, even if it's with your weaker right foot. Here's Burgess, corner of his own penalty area for Ipswich. Little ball up to Hutchinson, the sprightly Hutchinson who tried to spin and turn beyond Aribo, but Aribo wasn't having any of it. Authoritatively shrugged him aside. And Southampton have it back with Bednarek, the towering defender, 10 yards shy of the halfway line. Ipswich won, Southampton won. The Premier League returns to the network tomorrow night. Newcastle against Everton and West Ham against Tottenham among our live commentaries. All 10 from the Premier League live with us on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Wednesday including Arsenal against Luton and Manchester City against Villa. Ipswich trying to win it back high up the field. Morsi slides in on Stevens, but he can't get it back. And Harwood Bellis will come away with possession out of defence for Southampton. Thursday night, by the way, Talk Sport, Liverpool against Sheffield United. And then Chelsea against Manchester United will be on Talk Sport 2. So much live football. Now then, free kick to Southampton, just shy of the halfway line. Dean Ashton, it's your side of the pillar. <laughs> what, what was going on there? Well, Morsi just getting involved with, with Stevens. Didn't want the free kick to be taken quickly. Just held onto the ball slightly. He is on a yellow card, but he's been in this situation many times before. <laughs> and I've, I've been very impressed with Southampton. You know, they've yep. come away here to Portman Road, 72% of the possession so far. But actually, I don't think that'll phase Ipswich. I've watched them in certain games this season where they've played in this way and they've then looked very, very dangerous on the break themselves. But you've got to have a certain mentality to play that way in front of your, your home support when you, they expect you to, to press and hound and create chances. Highest average possession in the Championship, Southampton. The ball is at the feet of Harwood Bellis. Midway inside his own half the field. He'll steer it square to the feet of Bree. Quickly to the right and Aribo. 
Aribo with a little bandage on his right wrist tries to scamper beyond Luongo. Luongo stands tall and blocks him off. So Southampton have to go back towards the edge of their own penalty area again. Here's the goalkeeper Bazunu. And Bazunu finds Stevens, who under pressure from Chaplin goes backwards again to Harwood Bellis. All of the pitches in shade now, but still plenty of sunshine and blue sky up ahead. And the sun on the far side, the cobbled side of the ground. Very tight and compact. Portman Road and very atmospheric especially on late afternoon early evenings like this throw from Stuart Armstrong in field to Shea Adams 1-1 the score, Adams with a poor pass, he gave it straight to Wolfenden Adams who got the Southampton equaliser a very quick and impressive reply, here goes Davis who scored once already today for Ipswich, far side the left, early ball tried to thread it infield, took a big deflection off Bree and that'll be gathered by Gavin Bazunu. He, he, he can miss quite a few chances, Che Adams, but 13 now for the season for Southampton. As Stuart Armstrong races infield from the left-hand side and he picks a lovely pass to Adam Armstrong. What a goal for Southampton! 20 for the season for Adam Armstrong. He is one of the championship's hottest properties and what a pass from his namesake, Stuart Armstrong, to pick him out. They cut through the Ipswich back line and Adam Armstrong was there to roll it in. And I tell you what, it's going to be some race for promotion between now and the end of the season and Southampton are proving they are not out of it yet. They've come from behind to lead. It's Ipswich 1, Southampton to what a wonderful goal that was oh it's deadly double Armstrong wasn't it and it came all the way from Bazunu that is the way they can play Southampton when they get it right they can play through your press five passes it took to get to Stuart Armstrong he was allowed to run too far though 10 20 yards he ran with the ball he got his head up and it's a beautifully weighted pass right across right between the two centre backs all the way over towards Adam Armstrong because Leif Davis hadn't covered enough because he was probably too far forwards and just when you need a cool head Adam Armstrong is the man doesn't panic make sure he gets that crisp side foot contact past Ladke into the far left hand corner Dean Ashton we're witnessing some top class football tonight from the championship and Southampton in particular and suddenly the mood around Portman Road is completely different it's quiet in all four of the stands, save for the section on the far side where the Southampton fans are hopping up and down and cheering. Lots of uh, red and white replica shirts on that far side of the ground and it's Southampton who lead 2-1. What a beautifully crafted goal that was. As Ipswich win it back with Luongo. 30 yards out left of centre, surrounded by red shirts. Arebo steps in to regain possession for Southampton. And now Bednarek had to be careful on the turn, away from Chaplin. Steers the ball to the near side, the left-back position, where it's poked on by Adams towards uh, Stevens. Stevens looked for the first-time ball to Fraser, but covering was Wolfenden to roll it back to Hladke. So Ipswich behind... And the championship at the moment looks like this. Leicester played 39, 85 points. Leicester top. Ipswich second, 84. From 40 it would be. Remember, Leicester would have a game in hand on both uh, Ipswich and Leeds, who are third on 83, ahead of the game against Hull City later. Long way still to go at Portman Road. And Southampton have won it back again. It's Downs on the edge of the D. He sets up Adams, back to Downs. Couldn't quite get it under control. The pass was slightly behind him. Had to nudge it backwards to Bree. Bree in a crossing position, floats in the delivery. Spins over the head of Wolfenden. Defensive error by Tuan Sebi. And then in went Adams with Ladke, the goalkeeper. Ladke was brave at the feet of the Southampton number 10. And able to pounce down on the ball. The Ipswich fans behind the goal. The uh, Sir Bobby Robson end on their feet in the lower tier, not happy with the challenge. I think he had every right to go for the ball. Yeah, it was a proper 50-50 bravery, wasn't it, from Gladke, because it's not Shea Adams that's going in with his head. It's a lot easier going in with your feet than it is as a goalkeeper throwing the hands and facing towards the danger. Honestly, this is probably as good as I've seen Southampton all season for this period. They've been so fantastic in and out of possession, so crisp with the passing and movement causing Ipswich lots and lots of problems and also very, very good out of possession. They've won it back 
very, very quickly once Ipswich have had it. What a day it's been so far in the Championship in the EFL. Bolton in League One in third, closing the gap on Derby in second to three points after a big win over Reading. Uh, Portsmouth and Derby meet uh, tomorrow night, actually, in League One. And Carlisle were beaten, but they live to fight another day after other results went their way. In League Two, Stockport, the leaders, now four points clear after a win over AFC Wimbledon. Long ball driven high on the diagonal by Harwood Bellis. Fraser looked to take it inside on his stride, and it came off the arm of Tuan Sebi, the defender. And it's a free kick to Southampton about five yards from the left-hand corner of the penalty area. Ipswich fans furious. Ipswich won. Southampton two, 27 minutes gone. He doesn't do a lot wrong, to be honest, to Anzebe. His arm is pretty close to his body, but it's just probably obvious to Michael Salisbury that Ryan Fraser is getting that the other side because he just controlled it with the outside of his right foot away from to Anzebe. It struck the arm. And it was obvious that Fraser would have got it the other side. That's a couple of times now that ball has been played over the top of Tuan Zabi by Harwood Bellis, just arrowing that over to this left-hand side. And James Bree, well known for his set-piece delivery, hands on hips, a couple of yards from the corner of the penalty area, near side the left, as Southampton look to extend the lead. Whipped in by Bree, that's a poor delivery. Well, there you go, Dean Ashton, behind for a goal kick-off, just after I, I big him up and tell you how good his delivery is. I know, I know. <laughs> should how know by now. How often does it happen? <laughs> Too often, for me anyway. <laughs> well, I promise he is. He is very good on set plays. At least, are, at least he didn't hit the first man. That's no, that's one. true. That's true. There are a lot of able Southampton technicians on the field in terms of those sort of deliveries. Tuansebi has made a mistake in the right back position. He's inadvertently dribbled the ball straight out of play. Southampton are in control of the game. No mistake about it. They deserve to lead by two goals to one. They bounce back from a difficult opening. And they have the advantage. And remember, Southampton will have a couple of games in hand on Ipswich, whatever happens tonight. So they, as it stands, would move up to within seven points of Ipswich in second with those two games in hand. So don't write off Southampton just yet either. To Anzebi with the throw in the right back position for Ipswich Town. Ipswich from left to right in their blue and white. Infield to the Tigerish Morsi back to Wolfenden who just scooped that long up into the air didn't even reach the halfway line but it's brought down by Chaplin the number 10 on to Moore Moore held it up well infield to Morsi Morsi under pressure straight away surely that was a foul on the Southampton man but Ipswich play on Chaplin great ball out to the left hand side and Davis they've got men over here Ipswich infield to Chaplin straight at the goalkeeper miss hit it Southampton wanted a free kick they didn't get it there would have been quite a bit of controversy had that one gone in meanwhile it looks like keeper Moore is is down on the ground for Ipswich here. Southampton being urged to play on by their coaching staff. And if it's not a head injury, they do have every right to play on here. Booze from the Ipswich supporters. And suddenly Ipswich effectively with 10 men. Moore is lying on his back. Looks like it might be a leg injury. And actually the referee has stepped in to stop the game at this point. And Southampton again, words for Michael Salisbury, the referee. I can see why, though. I can see why Stevens has said, well, why, why, why do we have to stop? It's obvious that it's not a head injury. It's obvious that it's uh, probably a, a back problem for Kiefer Moore. There shouldn't be any reason to stop it for that. Hey, you might be right, Dean Ashton. It might well be a back issue for Moore, who's being treated now. Here come both sets of players to the near side touchline. Those tiny little technical areas in front of the dugouts and... Kieran McKenna and Russell Martin are both there. What do you think the, the message is from Kieran McKenna at the moment? Dean Ashton, former Norwich City striker, alongside me. How do Ipswich try and find a foothold again at 2-1 down with half an hour gone? Well, I usually look at the Ipswich mid midfield and think how strong they are in that area, how they can lock down the opposition. And they're being overrun at the moment, Morsi, Loongo in particular. I think Chaplin maybe, just for a period of time, has to just drop a little deeper because at times Southampton have got four midfielders in there because Stevens has gone in with Downs Stuart Armstrong Arebo are in there as well and the, that sort of box of four is just not being able to be coped with by the Ipswich midfield so maybe tactically just looking at how can they get that extra player in midfield to try and help them out and, and win the ball back but Kiefer Moore walking gingerly 
back issues not very nice when you have those as a as a big tall player played a lot of football hasn't he Kiefer Moore as well because he was involved in Wales a heartbreaking playoff defeat to Poland over the international break then played an hour on Good Friday and Kieran McKenna was full of praise for him for that and more on from the start again today and he's going to be able to come back on he's just rubbing that lower back the Ipswich assistant uh, Martin Pert is just behind him Ipswich won Southampton too Southampton have possession and Ipswich temporarily down to 10 men you would talk sports 10.89, 10.53am on smart speaker DAB, DAB Plus and via the talk sport app which is free and easy to download and once you've got it you can swipe between talk sport and talk sport 2 at your leisure the sports bar comes later on 10 o'clock once we are finished at Leeds against Hull 03717 now then Moore still waiting to come back on here he comes trotting back onto the field we're in the 33rd minute in Southampton Totally comfortable on the ball at walking pace now. Bree shifts it forward to Arriba, who suddenly tried to up the energy back to Bree inside his own half. Harwood Bellis has got Bednarek square. Bednarek, the obvious target, fellow centre half. Doesn't look right, Keeper Moore. Still looks uncomfortable. They've got Al Hamidi on the bench. I've been impressed with him when he's come on at times for Ipswich. Different kind of player, isn't he, Al Hamidi? Here is Caden Jackson crossing from the Ipswich right. It's a looping high crossover hit initially. It almost reached Leif Davis at the back post. Southampton with Bree able to get there. And now it's neatly plucked out of the air by Aribo, who will find Downs. Downs pumps it long, drives it downfield. And there is too much on that for Ryan Fraser. And the ball's easily gathered by the Ipswich goalkeeper, Václav Ladky. Great roar comes up from some of the Ipswich fans. I would fancy to end AB in that, in that foot race and physically against Fraser when they're close. That ball needed to be played quicker from Downs because it was a clever run from Fraser, but to end AB then was able to cover. Russell Martin, the, the Southampton boss, said before the game, I've no doubt will be written off again, that after dropping points later on against Middlesbrough, but his side are showing exactly why they are still potentially in contention for a top two spot. Stuart Armstrong has played it back to goalkeeper Bazuna. It's Ipswich 1, Southampton 2. 11 minutes of normal time remaining in the first half here. And now Moore has gone down again, and you're absolutely right, Dean Ashton, he might have to come off here. Yeah, I've had similar issues in the, in the past myself with back issues, and once that tends to go, it just affects you. It affects your whole body, and, and he just didn't look like... He looked like every step he was taking was painful like something jabbing him in the back so he'll have to come off and I'm pretty sure it will be Al Hamadi that comes on well Nathan Broadhead is an option too yeah should they want to put yeah, Kate Jack Jackson, uh, Jackson through Jackson the middle through the middle yeah so there are options for Kieran McKenna but Keeper Moore has had a great impact since joining the club six goals uh, since returning to Ipswich on loan from Bournemouth and certainly with the last remaining games of the season to come, they'll only have six to go after today, Ipswich. They don't want to lose him now. Norwich away next Saturday, live on TalkSport 2. Blackburn will be the opponents for Southampton at Ewood Park. Big win for Blackburn today, 5-1 at Sunderland. John Eustace, his first win in charge. Wins for QPR, for Rotherham, who stay alive for another game at least. Bristol City 1-0 at Plymouth, who are in big trouble. Middlesbrough beat Sheffield Wednesday. Coventry lost at home to Cardiff. Birmingham, huge win for them at home to Preston North End by a goal to nil. West Brom 2, Watford 2. And Leicester, top at the moment after beating Norwich 3-1. Stoke 1, Huddersfield 1 in the three o'clock kickoff on Talk Sport 2. Huddersfield still in the bottom three. So it is Al Hamadi, the former Wimbledon man who comes on for another substitute appearance as Keeper Moore goes off. Yeah, I think that's the right decision. I think there's probably a reason why Broadhead is, is on the bench, as you talked about, being away with Wales, the emotion that goes with those two games. And I like... Al Hamadi, I've been impressed with him when he's come on for cameo appearances. I think he's looked super lively. He's got himself in the box. He's looked a threat. I wonder whether Kiefer Moore had been carrying that injury before because he didn't look like he started the game particularly well. Not 
not as effective as he so usually is. And he's had to leave the field and Ipswich forced into the change. That's a poor ball out of play by Bednarek. Throw to Ipswich, 10 yards into opposition territory, right down below our commentary position. Turansebi will take it. And Kieran McKenna hands in pockets the manager just a couple of feet behind him. Tuansebi looking for options in blue and white from the throw. Thought about going back towards the halfway line and he's still plagued by indecision here. Long throw down the near side, the right little flick in field by Alhamid. And Jackson got the wrong side of Stevens, went down in the penalty area. No penalty, says the referee. And actually, very few appeals from the Ipswich players on the field in fairness there, Dean. Yeah, it's usually the key, isn't it? If none of your teammates even call for the penalty, I think that says a lot. Even Jackson's reaction, I think it was more hopeful than genuine. And that was definitely a foul by Adam Armstrong, shoving the back of Davis inside the centre circle. So the referee, Michael Salisbury, gets those two decisions absolutely right. 37 and a half minutes gone. Ipswich Town 1, Southampton 2. Ipswich took the lead and were top of the championship for about 60 seconds <laughs> before Che Adams... And then a wonderful goal from Adam Armstrong to put Southampton in front. Flighted ball high downfield towards Hutchinson. Hutchinson looks to bring it down on his chest, but Bree is there. Rolls it back to the goalkeeper in Bazunu. Clips it high towards the halfway line. Headed down by Luongo. Straight to the feet of Davis with the bright lime green boots on. Now Morsi. Middle of the Southampton half. Southampton with everybody back behind the ball. Morsi steered it wide left to the far side and Davis. Davis back in field to Luongo. Luongo under pressure from Adam Armstrong. So has to feed Wolfenden. Big tall defender inside the centre circle. Wolfenden quickens the pace. Wide to the near side and Jackson. Jackson scoops in a high cross. Again, it's a poorly hit right wing cross from Jackson. And that's going to drift behind harmlessly for a goal kick to Southampton who continue to remain in control of the game I think it's fair to say although as we know Dean a 2-1 a lead is a slender one it's almost like that break in play with uh, with Kiefer Moore's just unsettled Southampton a, a fraction but it must be a feature that they've they've talked about Ipswich whenever it's come down this right hand side towards Jackson the first thing he's thought is to get it in the box a poor header by Davis, cushioned straight into the path of Shea Adams, a whip crossfield ball, right to left of the near side and Fraser. Fraser back out wide to the wards, the corner of the penalty area where Stuart Armstrong was waiting. Axel Tuansebi comes across to poke it into touch for Ipswich. So Leeds would have the chance to go top with a win over Hull later at 8 o'clock live on Talk Sport. But Hull City themselves, six points off the playoffs and with two games in hand on Norwich. Liam Rossini's side still with hopes of a top six finish. The ball infield by Fraser under pressure from down by the corner flag. To Ansebi is there to send it back to Hladki. Goalkeeper clears towards the halfway line and Al Hamadi's run. Interception comes in from uh, Harwood Bellis. Very calm with the ball on his chest. And now Bree up towards Aribo. Aribo saw Davis coming behind him. And then the challenge from behind sent Aribo sprawling free kick. And the Ipswich fans increasingly frustrated here as we head towards the 40th minute. Yeah, they've just been way better in possession, Southampton. Ipswich have been sloppy, really, when they've had the ball. With that Southampton pressure, they've won the back, ball, ball back plenty of times. Great feet by Arriba, marauding infield from the right, Deflected, deflection on the pass, and Burgess was there to intercept. Burgess with a poor clearance, just rattled it onto the arm of Adams, so that is a, a handball. Assistant referee was flagging pretty quickly. Oh, and Ipswich have taken the free kick very clumsily. They've given it away. Straight to Fraser. Left wing position. Pops it back to Stuart Armstrong, who's got Adams and Adam Armstrong in the middle to aim at. The two forwards on the score sheet tonight. So far for Southampton. Stevens has given it straight to Tuansebi. And now Jackson. Deep inside his own half, the winger. Infield to Morsi, good ball. Quickly on to Luongo, square pass, lip of the centre circle. Luongo blocked off, and they were too slow in possession there, Ipswich. Yeah, I've seen it too often. Southampton just win that ball back straight away. And now sprinting infield again is Arriva. A lot of mobility about this Southampton team and players who can play in all sorts of different areas and different positions. And Fraser back to the halfway line and Bednarek. Downs was caught by Chaplin. Holding on to his knee, play continues as the crossfield ball from Harwood Bellis reaches Fraser. He controlled it with his hand. And another free kick to Ipswich. Ipswich 1, Southampton 2. And 
Well, they made a great start, the home team, Dean Ashton, but it quickly turned in Southampton's favour. Yeah, it didn't affect them at all, Southampton. Brilliant response to score so quickly. And then they've been on top ever since. Ipswich yet to get into any sort of pattern where they retain possession with any real quality. Too often they've given the ball away. Been quite erratic. It's meant Southampton have then been comfortable because of it. Here's Wolfenden midway inside his own half the field. Four towards Luongo, heavy on that pass. One back by Aribo. Adam Armstrong square to Stuart Armstrong. Up the edge of the penalty area, onto Fraser Angle, tight! Just wide of the far post. So nearly a wonderful third goal for Southampton. Fraser, the angle was against him, tried to steer it into the far corner. Radke dived. I don't think he was going to get there, but it whistled just a foot or so beyond the post and it stays just 2-1 to Southampton and again it comes from sloppy play from Ipswich the ball out from the back just too far away from Luongo Aribo finds Armstrong Armstrong with a clever I thought he was going to shoot with his left foot clever little side foot pass just down the side of the Ipswich defence for Fraser and he had to strike this straight there couldn't be any curl on it whatsoever if it was going to go in that far corner and it just had a hint of it curl with the inside of the foot that took it away from Cladley's post again danger though for Ipswich got to do better in possession Southampton hit five on their uh, last win here that was in the championship in August 2011 as part of that run under Nigel Adkins from the third tier to the top flight that's what Ipswich are aiming to do this season two on down they'd stay second at least for now but Leeds of course are only a point behind them as it stands, ahead of their game against Hull, which we'll have live for you later. Here is Harwood Bellis, just inside his own half of the field. You almost get the sense here, Southampton, that 90 seconds of normal time to go, there'll be a bit of stoppage time. They could almost play the half out at this point, yeah. such as their quality on the ball. Yeah, I mean, that midfield area needs to be looked at from Kieran McKenna. They've been swamped in that. Jackson has won it back for Ipswich on the halfway line. Now Morsi surging forward and darting towards the edge of the penalty area. Cross came Downs. Downs got the ball and then must have been caught by Morsi. Now then, I think Bednarek's having a word with the referee. I wonder if he's making the point that Morsi's already been booked. I think that would be harsh because it was more Morsi's momentum than anything else it looked like to me that took him into that challenge. And one or two Southampton players in the ears of the referee, but Michael Salisbury isn't going to produce a second yellow card. Yeah, you, you expect that from Southampton players. Of course, they're going to make the point that it's Sam Morsi that's made the challenge. Not quite sure he, he knew how quickly Downs was coming across and caught him only a fraction away from the ball. That would be very, very harsh for it to be a, a second yellow card for Morsi. And Downs, once a local favourite, is getting the boos from the Ipswich fans as he slowly gets to his feet. Last 30 seconds of normal time to go. All eyes will drift towards the fourth official and that electronic board in just a moment. Bednarek standing over the ball for Southampton and Bazunu will be left to take it. Bazunu who conceded the goal but hasn't had a save to make. Thereafter. He's been a spectator, hasn't he? He'll have watched and been very impressed with his team and the way that they've, uh, they've played... In possession, they've been pretty outstanding, Southampton. That's seven added minutes at the end of the first half. And so plenty of time for further goals before the break. At the moment, Southampton look much the more likely team to extend their lead, and it's a really subdued atmosphere here at Portman Road. Southampton closing the gap on Ipswich to seven points as it stands, leading 2-1. Throw in field by the captain Stevens. The flick by Stuart Armstrong. It's steered away upfield by Tuan Sevi. One back by Bednarek, who's knocked it wide to the left again. Stuart Armstrong just waited for the run of Fraser. Tried to play a reverse ball up the inside left channel, but Tuan Sevi was there to clear this time. Chaplin tries to take a possession. He's blocked off, and the Ipswich fans out of their seats. They're packed around us in the commentary box, and a lot of them are saying yellow card that should be for Stevens. But again, Michael Salisbury says just a free kick. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's just a foul. I think Connor Chaplin made the most of it, but was clever in the way that he just nipped the ball past Stevens. We haven't seen much of him though, have we? Connor Chaplin, he's been very, very quiet. He scored the winner at Blackburn Rovers on Good Friday. Barely an empty seat at Portman Road 
as is always the case really these days, and big crowds at Southampton too. To Ansevi's chip the ball up the inside right channel. Here comes the goalkeeper Bazunu, races to the edge of his penalty area to claim in front of the very speedy Al Hamadi. And it is a very different threat that they're coming up against now. Southampton in comparison to Keeper Moore up the middle. Another free kick given. This time for a foul on Bednarek and this stop start beginning to stoppage time continues. We are just under two through the added seven minutes. He will give you more of that though. Al Hamadi, that energy, that closing down. He won't give those Southampton defenders as much time as I think Keeper Moore was giving them. You just wonder whether going into the second half and later in the game that could be key. Long ball forward by Bednarek from the free kick. That'll be a header away by Davis from the left back position. Little flick by the diminutive Chaplin to the halfway line. Given away though by Al Hamadi. No great rhythm in the Ipswich side at the moment. Here is Adams. He's played it through the legs of Luongo. He's 40 yards from goal. He's knocked it wide to Adam Armstrong. Adam Armstrong left footed curler just over the top. Ladke well, dived for it. Whether he would have got there is another question altogether. But Adam Armstrong looks capable of scoring every time he's on the ball. 20 goals now for the season for Adam Armstrong all of those coming in the championship yeah another good move from Southampton Stuart Armstrong into Shea Adams out towards Adam Armstrong and he just stands still pretty much with the ball allows his teammates to make runs around him tucks it onto his left foot looks to just curl it float it to that far corner and just got too much on it and now here comes Southampton again in the third minute of added time at the end of the first half. Leading by two goals to one, live on TalkSport. The TalkSport network, the only place for live commentaries from the Championship. And we've got all ten Premier League games in the midweek round to come, starting tomorrow night. Here goes Arrivo for Southampton, corner of the area, infield onto his left foot, pops it back to Downs, quickly wide to the right-hand side and Bree, cobbled side of the ground. And... Down slows possession again. Back it goes to Harwood Bellis. Out to Bree once more. Ipswich can't get the ball. No, it's a big di ideal way just to see this first half out for Southampton. And again, I go back to that midfield area because Stevens is, is just pushing forwards into that area. It means they've got four in there at times against the two of Ipswich. There'll be a throw on the near side of the field for Ipswich. Right in front of the Ipswich dugout, and there was finger pointing from Stuart Armstrong there towards the Ipswich dugout. Not sure what was said. A fourth official being spoken to by Russell Martin, who wasn't happy with the decision. The Southampton boss, who's carved out this possession based side and has seen results come with it this time after spells at MK Dons and Swansea. Forward by Chaplin, intercepted by Stevens, plays the ball out of defence, straight to Tuensebi. Very congested on the near side, the Ipswich right. Very little space as Ipswich win a throw. Midway into opposition territory, they've got two and a half minutes of added time at the end of the first half here. Leicester, top of the championship. Ipswich second on 84 points and Leeds behind them in third on 83. Leeds against Hull later in our fourth TalkSport commentary. Uh, network commentary of the day. Downs will play it back to Harwood Bellis on the edge of his own penalty area. Now to the right back position and Bree. A couple of minutes of added time to go at the end of the first half, but no threat to the Southampton goal whatsoever. Though that said, Ipswich have certainly got the pace in behind to trouble any defence in this league. Here is Stuart Armstrong skipping over the halfway line. He's held up somewhat by Morsi. Drives the ball cross field. Adam Armstrong neat layoff back to Arebo. Arebo wide to Adam Armstrong again. More good football from Southampton. Adam Armstrong is down by the corner flag. He tries a right-footed cross and it comes off Davis. And that's a Southampton corner. They just cannot stop the flow of Southampton's play. Again, it was Bazunu who just clipped it out towards Stuart Armstrong. He then fires it across towards Adam Armstrong. It's laid off. They just all of a sudden there onto it, which is back four. Mm -hmm. Definitely needs to be a reshuffle, I think, from Kieran McKenna at half-time just to get to grips with some of this Southampton play. It's James Bree to take the corner. Harwood Bellis had made a late run, headed away. It's come out to Arebo, five yards from the edge of the box. Square to Stuart Armstrong. Great reverse ball. Stevens is in. His effort is blocked and the offside flag is up. He did look in an offside position to get to that reverse ball. And it would have been a very rare goal for Jack Stevens. Not scored since 
2019 and he was blocked off by Gladke. Wouldn't have counted anyway. 2-1 Southampton. He just didn't look comfortable either. It took him so long to allow that ball to come across his body to try and finish. Gladke made the save anyway, but he was two or three yards offside. Gladke is under pressure. The goalkeeper hurried clearance away from Adam Armstrong. High up to the halfway line, header away by Bednarek. The ball attempted to be brought down by Chaplin, but he couldn't get it under control. Very quiet half for Connor Chaplin. So often Ipswich is talisman in the championship this year and in League One last season. And he scored 26 goals. And there are only 10 seconds of the seven added minutes to go. Lots of home fans have headed to the concourse areas ahead of half time there are a smattering of empty blue seats long raking ball up the left hand side by Bednarek headed away by Wolfenden referee has had a look at his watch there's the half time whistle and a very impressive recovery from Southampton who produced some sparkling football to lead by two goals to one at half time and as it stands not only would Ipswich miss the chance to go top of the championship Leeds would have the opportunity to leapfrog both them and Leicester City later if it were to stay like this. Leif Davis gave Ipswich the lead. Che Adams and Adam Armstrong, the second goal, a fine goal, have responded for Southampton. Ipswich have lost Keeper Moore to injury in the first half. And at the break, it's Ipswich Town 1, Southampton 2. A cracking game, as you'd expect, at Portman Road with so much at stake in the Championship. I'm Faker Rothers with you on this EFL Easter Monday bonanza. What a day it's been on Talk Sports so far. Leicester regaining top spot in the Championship table after coming from behind to beat Norwich 3-1. Ipswich needed to respond, but Southampton have other ideas and lead at the break. Russell Martin side still with their eyes on automatic promotion. We're not done yet either. Stay with us here on Talk Sport after this game. I'm here at Ellen Road road ahead of your live and exclusive 8 p.m. commentary of Leeds against Hull with Leeds looking to leapfrog Ipswich and Leicester as Joe just said and go top of the table and that follows the conclusion of this match at Portman Road and I tell you what Dean Ashton you've been in for a right treat in that opening 45 minutes haven't you uh, let's start with the Leaf Davis opener it was an absolute cracker wasn't it and uh, some poor defending from Southampton ultimately but he had so much work to do and absolutely buried it he did, and I just wonder as well whether um, Bazunu is genuinely think, well, he's going to cross it. You know, he's been so good at assisting players all season, and they do so much work, I think, goalkeepers on people that, you know, the players that are going to cross the ball and areas in which they hit. That's partly why I think he's, he's taken by surprise by the strike from Davis. But I always say this when I hear people say, goalkeeper shouldn't be beaten on their near post I just think that's absolute rubbish mm. if you hit it hard enough and accurate enough then sometimes the goalkeepers just cannot react you know it would be an area that I would aim at at times if you had a tight angle that top you know near post top corner because I think it is difficult because the, the goalkeepers are expecting and looking across their angles if you play that across they've then got to get across to the other side it was a brilliant strike from, from Davis yeah, it really was. But I tell you what, Shea Adams responded immediately. You're always at your most vulnerable, aren't you, just after you've scored? And it was inside a minute, but it was Joe Aribo really doing all the hard work, just managing to get his toe on the ball to, to tee Shea Adams up. Yeah, I mean, he's come into the side. He's been excellent in that, in that first half. But it did. It looked like Ipswich were just stood still as Southampton attacked straight away. They, they've been so good, though, honestly. The quality in which they've shown to play their way through an Ipswich press at times, and it showed with the goal. Yes, they get a bit lucky in terms of Shea Adams' is, he looks offside. Mm. It's just that I think it's Burgess that's stepping back, following a run on the far side and keeps him then onside. But since then, Southampton have been outstanding. It's the best I've seen them all season in terms of the whole control, the array of their strengths that they've shown in terms of keeping possession, the interchanging of positions and then out of possession. They're the best team in the division, I would say, out of possession, um, Southampton. You know, they... they, they swamp you once they they lose the ball and they've shown all of that in what is a, a massive game with huge high pressure i loved your commentary line doubly deadly armstrong stewart with the pass took out three players adam with the finish low and powerful it was a lovely team goal it was yeah and again it was just another one of many great moves that they've had in that first half because they've had the numbers in midfield to overwhelm it switch when they get it right and stuart armstrong was was excellent the pass was perfect as a striker they're the ones you want where you don't even have to adjust your stride. You can just run onto it, concentrate on the 
on the finish itself and, and Adam Armstrong who's done it all season was nice and calm and just picked his spot really with the side foot he did uh, just finally how, how big a blow is it for Ipswich to lose Kiefer Moore in the first half I think so, but he didn't look right. I, no. I didn't think he was having anywhere near the effect he normally would do in a game from the from the start. They weren't necessarily looking for him early either. So whether that was an issue, and, and Al Hamadi actually, I think he gives you something different. He'll give mm. you a bit more out of possession, which Ipswich might need in this uh, in this second half if they genuinely want to pressurise Southampton. But do not rule Ipswich out I've seen it happen too often <laughs> this season and last season where you think it's flat and all of a sudden they can come out they've got players that can change things off the off the bench um, so I wouldn't expect a, um, a very different Ipswich in the second half yeah more goals in this one I'm sure back with you shortly Dean as it stands Ipswich dropped to second Southampton closed the gap on third place Leeds United to six points though the championship topsy-turvy as always and we love it here on TalkSport at half time it's Ipswich 1 Southampton 2 second half action coming next EFL Live on TalkSport with McDonald's. How's this for a tasty lineup? A McCrispy and a strawberry milkshake. Order McDelivery now on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points delivered too. 18 plus. Rewards account required. Participating restaurants. Subject to availability. Delivery fees and terms apply. Get all your must-haves this Ramadan at Asda. From a suhoor to get out of bed for. With Lancashire Farm natural yoghurt for £1.60. To sunset reunions you'll rush home for. With 1.8 kilograms of Shazan's fresh chicken breast down to £11.20. We've got every Ramadan moment covered. So you can concentrate on what really matters. Asda. That's more like it. Selected stores and lines subject to availability may exclude Asda Express and small stores. See asda.com forward slash small stores. On TalkSport with McDonald's. Bring on the unbeatable strike partnership of McNuggets and Dip. Order McDelivery now on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points delivered too. 18 plus. Rewards account required. Participating restaurants. Subject to availability. Delivery fees and terms apply. TalkSport bet. If you want to flutter, punters know it's the only place to go. Because you get the form and the latest dots across your sync device. Plus weekly bet boost prices. Win big jackpots from the classic gaming slots. Talk sport bet, the broadcast bonus bookie. Keeping you on track with all the sporting stats. Steeple chases, even title races. Looking after sports fans, you know. Because Talk Sport bet is the app that does all that. It's the only place to go. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. Need help to grow your business online? Vodafone Business presents Digital SOS with me, Stephen Bartlett. Going digital is everything nowadays. I could really, really do with some help. If your business is struggling with its digital skills, Vodafone Business has got you covered. Vodafone V-Hub is a free place to go to for small business support and practical guidance. Search Vodafone V-Hub now and you can book a free consultation with a V-Hub advisor today. At Morrison's, get half-priced toys on brands like Hot Wheels and Barbie, plus many more in store. That's more play for them and peace for you. Morrison's to shop at Morrison's. Majority of stores subject to availability. Excludes online. Selected toys. Hot Wheels. 10-pack was £23. Now £11.50. Barbie Beach Doll was £19. Now £9.50. Offer ends 14th of April. Mike Brewer here. Forget the chocolate eggs and tell the big fluffy bunny to whop it. For a real Easter extravaganza, get to mymotorworld.com. Save up to 20% off service parts, including filters, engine oils, lubricants, wiper blades, bulbs, and more. With discounts on thousands of products, put all your service kits in one basket. Then check out and save at mymotorworld.com. Mymotorworld.com. Investing with AJ Bell feels so good, you'll just want to ring that bell anywhere, anytime. In the office, in the pub, on the bus, on a ship, on a train. In the rain, in the gym, in the library, Shh. at a wedding, Shh. at a librarian's wedding. Shh. You can even ring it in space. Under the water. In a sawmill! Or just a good old-fashioned cowbell. Yes, that's the sweet sound of investing with AJ Bell. AJ Bell, feel good investing. The value of investments can go down as well as up. Want to build the bet you want in seconds? With Unibet's bet builder, you're on. Add shots corners, cards and more and increase your odds with Bet Builder Rackers combining Bet Builders across multiple games and sports download the Unibet app or visit unibet.co.uk and get a Bet Builder boost every day Unibet 
you're wrong. 18 plus, begambleaware.org, pre match only, match stake £10 minimum, combined odds of 4 to 1 and 3 selections. T's and C's apply. On 1089 and 1053 medium wave, on DAB, on the app, on your smart speaker. Supersize your A pool with over 50 games of live football. Talk sport. ahead of the next step in a championship promotion race that is one of the best in living memory. A win will take Ipswich back to the top as they seek a return to the Premier League. Morsi's crossfield ball, he picks out Davis, left on edge of the penalty area, oh he's found the corner, he's beaten Gavin Bazunu and Davis has lashed Ipswich Town in front. Off it's Adam Armstrong, back to Arubo inside the box, he poked it goalwards and then it's turned in by Adams. Southampton fight back straight away. And suddenly Portman Road is silenced. Shea Adams gets a poacher's goal. And Southampton were behind for less than 60 seconds. James Bree is standing over it for Southampton. He goes for goal and it's just wide. And Stuart Armstrong races in field from the left-hand side. And he picks a lovely pass to Adam Armstrong. What a goal for Southampton. They cut through the Ipswich back line. And Adam Armstrong was there to roll it in. And I tell you what, it's going to be some race for promotion between now and the end of the season. And Southampton are proving they are not out of it yet. Oh, it certainly is. I absolutely love this league. This is EFL Game Day Live on TalkSport. I'm Faker Rothers, and what a weekend of football we've brought you across the TalkSport network. We are the home of the EFL and a championship, League One and League Two. Certainly not disappointing this season. It is so, so tight. Half time in the third of four commentary games we're bringing you today from the championship. It's Ipswich 1, Southampton 2. At 8 o'clock, we have Leeds against Hull City as well. But in case you missed any of the results from the championship today, let me go through them for you. We kick things off with a 12.30 kickoff at King Power Stadium. Leicester go top of the table and dense Norwich's playoff hopes after a 3-1 victory earlier on. Birmingham City 1-0 winners over Preston. A huge lifeline for Birmingham. Jay Stansfield's goal moving them two points clear of the relegation places. Coventry though, their playoff hopes took a massive dent. Architects of their own downfall in the end after losing 2-1 at home to Cardiff City. Liam Kitching scoring two own goals to give Cardiff a chance of making the playoffs still. Middlesbrough are 2-0 winners over Sheffield Wednesday. The Owls still in big trouble, second from bottom. Plymouth Argyle uh, were beaten as well by Bristol City by a goal to nil. They're 21st, just one point above the relegation zone. It's a record fifth defeat at home without scoring a goal for Ian Foster's side. Really poor run of form they're on at the moment moment. Rotherham, unbelievable, staved off relegation for a little bit longer. First win in 16 games, a 2-1 victory over Millwall. Charlie White with the winner ultimately, but they're so far adrift, they're all but down. Uh, Stoke City, a one-all draw against Huddersfield Town. Huddersfield, no win in six. They've lost three of the last five. They're in massive trouble, but Radulovic got the equaliser to give them a point at least, and uh, still a point from safety. Lifelines as well for Blackburn Rovers. 5-1 win over Sunderland. I can't believe that Sunderland <laughs> were in the playoff places at the start of the year. They've had such a terrible run of form at the moment, but Blackburn Rovers giving themselves a little bit of a boost in their fight against relegation, as did QPR. Uh, it finished Swansea City nil. QPR won. A wonderful Steve Cook volley lifting QPR up to 16th. Huge for them. And West Brom looked down and out against Watford, but came from behind and uh, ended up with a 2 all draw at the Hawthorns which was quite incredible and the table is just I mean it's been tight all season but when we're coming down to the last six in some cases seven for most teams games of the season it is looking absolutely crazy a reminder for you Leicester City top 85 points Ipswich Town, a uh, point behind them, but having played a game more, and it's half-time and they're trailing against Southampton at the moment. Leeds are currently third on 83 points, having been top of the table at the start of the day. Southampton, well, Ipswich are top of the table start of the day, I should say. Southampton are fourth, 
Uh, they've played 38 games, as in this one here, and they're on 77 points, but closing the gap to Leeds United uh, to six points. West Brom and Norwich sit in the other two playoff spots as we stand, and Coventry City had the opportunity to close the gap uh, on Norwich after Norwich's defeat, but failed. They're still four points outside of the relegation places, and actually you can probably go all the way down to Cardiff City in 11th for, play for teams that could make a late push for the playoffs if they wanted to. When you then get down to the bottom, Blackburn Rovers and QPR giving themselves a massive, massive lifeline because they're still uh, six points above the relegation places, albeit six places above the relegation places, but that is how tight it is. When I was actually writing down today uh, a list of all of the fixtures, I tend to pick out the games that have got something on it and I'm going down and I'm going down and I'm going down. Every single game had something on it today, which is exactly uh, what it is like uh, watching the championship this season, Dean Ashton. It's utterly incredible. Your Norwich City today will be kicking themselves, won't they? They will, but then they'll be relieved <laughs> come, the, uh, come the end of the day, especially if Hull can't get a result against Leeds, which is obviously going to be difficult for, for them. But it is incredible, Faye, when you say that about there being something on all of the all of the games at, at this stage of the season it just makes it so exciting I think as a neutral that so many teams have got so much to to play for the jeopardy of relegation and then the excitement of the playoffs and the the promotion push um, it's just so exciting isn't it the the league and it's not just the championship it's right through the football league yeah it is we'll talk about league one and league two uh, later on in the show no doubt but we don't have time to do it now because Southampton are already out on the pitch getting themselves ready for this second half what are they going to need to do to cement this crucial three points for themselves and what do Ipswich need to do Dean to get themselves back in it well I think Southampton will probably feel like they'll need a third and, and why would they change what they're doing because it's been so successful in that first half but they'll be looking for that third goal to give them a cushion and for Ipswich, I was just talking to Joe about what they could do because of that midfield area. Just they look so swamped in there. So mm. do you do you maybe take off a, a Jackson or a Hutchinson and and maybe put Travis perhaps in into midfield to have a solid three in there and maybe just move Chaplin slightly out wide. That could be something that the manager looks at. They've got Sarmiento, another terrific player in Broadhead. So it could just be a case of personnel that changes. But Ipswich now. Coming out, big, big second half for them. Huge, big 45 minutes for both Ipswich and Southampton in their race for Premier League football next season. Let's rejoin your commentary team at Portman Road. Former Norwich striker Dean Ashton is alongside your match commentator, Joe Shannon. Yes, Southampton were out quite early. Ipswich have kept them waiting a couple of minutes here. And as we look down from our commentary position at the very back row of the main stand, there don't appear to be any half-time changes for either side so speculation among the home supporters that there might be a substitution but it doesn't look like there's one forthcoming for the second half so Ipswich will have to come from behind and they are very good at doing so they've won more championship points from behind in matches than anybody else this season 28 points have come from behind they took the lead Southampton, though, have turned things around and it's Southampton in lead by two goals to one and keeping up their faint hopes of automatic promotion. Ipswich would miss the chance to go top as it stands. Leicester City still at the summit, at least for now, with Leeds against Hull to come once we're done here. All happening and it's all live on Talk Sport. Ipswich have got the second half off and underway in their blue and white, playing from right to left towards the most vocal of the two ends of the field there were Ipswich fans at both ends and so Bobby Robson stand to our left hand side and Southampton in there red shirts black shorts and white socks playing from left to right they lead 2-1 and Ipswich have Ladke in goal to Ansebi Wolfenden Burgess and Davis the defenders Morsi and Luongo in midfield Jackson Chaplin and Hutchinson behind Al Hamadi up front. Kiefer Moore had to go off injured in the first half. Southampton have Bazunu as their goalkeeper with Bree, Harwood Bellis, uh, Bednarek the centre half. Stevens has just dropped to left back momentarily as Hutchinson looks to get in behind on the edge of the penalty area. The ball trickled through his legs. Hutchinson has got the pace to win it back off Bree. Down by the corner flag on the near side of the field and Ipswich right on the attack straight away. Roar of the home fans. Lots of home fans still retaking their seats and 
Hutchinson is in again down this near side. The lefty crosses towards the far post. It levade both Al Hamadi and Jackson. And steered out of play by Ryan Fraser for Southampton. Ipswich throw, far side the right. The rest of the Southampton team, Aribo and Stuart Armstrong and Downs in midfield. And Fraser and Adam Armstrong in support of Che Adams. Here is Luongo through the middle. He's giving it away, looking for Jackson. Ipswich get it back again. Straight away in an up-tempo start to the second half from the home team, Dean Ashton. Yeah, moving the ball quicker, taking quick throws, just trying to up the whole tempo of the game. Pressurise this Southampton side. Here comes Davis, near side the left. Early ball into Chaplin, first touch was heavy. Blocked off by Harwood Bellis, will steer it clear to the centre circle. Southampton have given the ball away on two occasions already in the second half so far. That is very unlike them. A little sloppy, but Downs has won it back. Ipswich on a free kick and there's nothing given. Southampton are on the counter here with the pace of Adam Armstrong. Edge of the penalty area. White to Adams. Angle against him. Drags it right across the edge of the six-sharp box. It's going to squeeze wide and out of play for a goal kick. Meanwhile, Ipswich are absolutely furious that they didn't get a free kick earlier on in the build-up to that counter-attack. And Stuart Armstrong is the man who's gone down for Southampton midway inside opposition territory. So Michael Salisbury, the referee, has suddenly got a lot to deal with. Two and a half minutes into what is surely going to be a fascinating second half, live on Talk Sport. It's Ipswich 1, Southampton 2, and the Talk Sport network is your home of the EFL, the only place to hear live and exclusive national radio commentaries and much more to come between now and the end of the season. Stuart Armstrong's back on his feet. I think it was just as Luongo tried to make that challenge as he burst away and then just tried to jump over the top of him and just caught him with his knee slightly on the, the back of the head, but he's fine, but just shows they will be a threat on the break if Ipswich do give the ball away. Here come Ipswich, the team in blue and white. Hutchinson in the centre circle. There's loads of space for Davis. Near side the left. He's about 10 yards from the penalty area. Davis holds up the play, whips in the cross. Jackson's header, and it's gathered down low to his left by Bazunu, the goalkeeper who I think... I think it was probably going wide, but Bazunu pounced on the ball nonetheless. And the atmosphere has really picked up here. Ipswich fans all around us in the Coventry position. We're in the main stand, and I can see... Uh, Kieran McKenna and Russell Martin both standing on the edge of the technical area both with their arms folded Southampton have made a, a slightly less energetic start to the second period there's a bit more dynamism about Ipswich but here comes Southampton Aribo has wriggled away from Luongo with ease he's raced in field to the midway point of the Ipswich half and now it's Stevens steering it through the legs of Fraser who let it run into the path on that far side of Stuart Armstrong Stuart Armstrong can play it back to Stevens corner the penalty area Stevens with his back to goal wide to Fraser neat little touch the reverse ball to Stuart Armstrong who wins the corner with a back heel off to Ansebi and this is a Southampton team leading by two goals to one and playing with Great confidence, former England striker Dean Ashton. Especially on that left-hand side. Stuart Armstrong's been excellent in the way that he's just drifted from midfield and he tends to go nice and tight over to that side to Fraser to double up on Tuan Zebe. And they've struggled to get to grips with his positioning. It's Bree who'll take the corner, short to Fraser, far side of the field. It's back out to Bree again for the right-footed in-swinging delivery. High towards the six-yard box, headed away by Burgess. Stuart Armstrong gets to it, edge of the penalty area, hooks it back over his shoulder, not very far. Burgess is there with another clearing head, and a third, thumping the ball towards the halfway line. The Australian international. Five minutes into the second half, Ipswich 1, Southampton 2 in the EFL Championship on TalkSport with McDonald's. Order Muck delivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty rewards points. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. The Championship looks like this. Leicester top, 85 points from 39 games. Ipswich second with 84 points from 40 it would be. Leeds third, 83 from 39 of the chance to go top themselves later on. Here is Adam Armstrong trying to maraud in field for Southampton. He finds Downs, back out wide to this near side, the right, and Adams. Adams faced up by Davis. We've got the Premier League on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night on the TalkSport Network. All ten matches live and exclusive with us. The Lionesses on Friday evening against Sweden at the start of Euro qualifying. And then we do it all again next weekend. More than 50 live games on the network in this month of April alone. As Fraser looks to race down that far side, the left, and he's fouled by Jackson in what looked like a 50-50 challenge. 
I just wonder, was that a bit harsh on Caden Jackson trying to track back Dean and giving away a free kick? I thought he did well. I thought that was defensively good work from Caden Jackson. Just got his body across, put his leg across. Fraser to protect the ball. Fraser goes down. But the referee, Michael Salisbury, gives Southampton the free kick to more groans from the Ipswich support who booed the referee off at half-time. Bree and Fraser are standing on that far side of the field. The Southampton fans, most of them in the upper tier of the cobbled stand and a small number in the corner of the lower tier on that far side. Lots of Southampton flags in between the two tiers. It'll be Bree to take it. Right-footed and in swinging the delivery. Ipswich have brought everybody in blue and white back behind the ball. They trail by two goals to one. It's Bree in towards the near post. The flicked header is turned away by Hladke. Was it Bednarek who got up there? Hladke makes a flying save and it's a corner. Well, if you get the delivery right and you put that amount of pace on it that Bree did, then all you need is just a touch, a glance, just to arc it towards the goal. And Hladke needed to be sharp there, down to his left. Brilliant save with his left hand round the post. And that is a measure of what James Bree can do with these set pieces. We talked about it in the first half. Southampton's third corner of the game. Good spell in the second half, this for them. Whipped in right-footed and out-swinging. Headed away by Burgess, firmly for Ipswich through a crowd. It's back up wide to Ryan Fraser, who'll tease it back to Downs in the centre circle. And Southampton are reasserting their control on the game again. Relegated from the Premier League last season, looking to bounce back at the first time of asking. Whatever happens, I'm sure they'll be in the playoffs at the very least. Adam Armstrong, low right-footed shot, well gathered by Hladke. It took a deflection, spun up into the air, and Hladke made a diving save. He's played every league minute for Ipswich this season, the goalkeeper. Yeah, and he's been excellent at times, and another decent save at least. Adam Armstrong showing that he's just a quick thinker in and around the penalty area. He doesn't take many touches and long to decide what he's going to do, whether that is to play a teammate in or whether it is just to get out of his feet and take the strike. Ipswich, remember, had won eight of nine coming into today. They're 2-1 down to Southampton. Adam Armstrong, corner of the penalty area, tries to lead infield to Stuart Armstrong. Morsi comes across this time. It bobbles behind for another Southampton corner. And the way the game is going, Dean Ashton here, it would be hard to see even Ipswich with their powers of recovery coming from a 3-1 deficit. Yeah, it's not been the start they'd have wanted in the second half. There has to be changes, surely. I mean, it's so obvious that Southampton have got complete control in that midfield area. Connor Chaplin doesn't really do that defensive work. It's James Bree to take another corner, whipping it in right-footed again. Burgess gets a good glancing touch on it. It's come back out to Arebo, corner of the box. Jinx beyond two blue shirts, whipped in by Adams. High to the far post, Chaplin with the header this time. Arguably the smallest player on the pitch, I think. Connor Chaplin just about to flick it away from danger. Now here comes Southampton again, though. It's Ryan Fraser to cross right-footed. Again, Burgess dominant in the air for Ipswich, who are under real pressure in the second half. And in the end, that pressure ultimately comes to nothing. The ball out of play... And applause and cheers, almost of relief, it feels like, from some in the Ipswich crowd. Ten minutes into the second half, 2-1 down. Davis will take a throw, and as it stands, Leeds will have the chance to become the new leaders of the championship if they beat Hull at 8 o'clock. We'll have team news from Ellen Road on Talk Sport for you very shortly. And as I said earlier, in case you missed it, if Leeds where to go top that would have been three leaders of the championship in one day because Ipswich started at the summit Leicester leapfrogged them Ipswich were leaders again in the first half for about a minute before Southampton fought back to lead 2-1 and who knows what Leeds will do later against Hull City who are playoff chasers the ball is intercepted by Harwood Bellis for Southampton he's nudged it out of play and it's a, an Ipswich throw 15 yards into Southampton territory. Else, where in the championship today? Huge win for Birmingham against Preston. Blow for Preston in their playoff chase. Coventry won Cardiff two. Coventry stay seventh. Sheffield Wednesday still in the drop zone after losing at Middlesbrough. Plymouth in big trouble just outside the relegation places. Lost at home to Bristol City. Rotherham two, Millwall one. Rotherham stay up for at least another game or so, but they're surely going to be relegated. Stoke one, Huddersfield one. That was live on Talksport two. Blackburn won 5-1 at Sunderland. First win in charge for John Eustace, finally. Huge victory for QPR at Swansea. Steve Cook's header. QPR six points clear now. And West Brom two, Watford two. That was a full-time score. Now then, Davis, just shy of the halfway line, will take the throw for Ipswich. Infield with the throw. 
towards Chaplin. Chaplin sticks it forward towards Al Hamadi. Al Hamadi trying to turn beyond Harwood Bellis, 10 yards from the edge of the penalty area. The slight tackle comes in from Hutchinson, but Southampton have won it back in that congested midfield area. Southampton winning the midfield battle. Clearly, Dean Ashton. Still, yeah, I mean, Stuart Armstrong's just got free reign. Just goes wherever he wants, not being picked up. Lovely pass. Through towards Fraser, corner of the penalty area, down to the challenge of Tuan Sebi. Fraser appeared to go to ground a little too easily there, and he's being told to get up and get on with it by the referee. And now it's Ipswich on the attack. Great reverse ball over the top by Chaplin. Jackson's got the pace to get to it. Only Al Hamadi in the middle, he crosses. It's behind Al Hamadi. And tucked square by Bree on the cover to find Stevens and Southampton keep their defensive composure. This is the sort of football Southampton were playing on that club record on beaten run. And here they come again with, Adam, with Stuart Armstrong, racing up to the edge of the box, through to Ryan Fraser, first-time effort, saved by Hladke. Oh, Fraser should have scored! But Hladke made a good sprawling block at his feet. It's a Southampton corner, all Southampton leading 2-1. Oh, they were totally caught out there, so, um, Ipswich. Wolford and Burgess on their own, three against two. Downs does brilliantly just to hold and hold and wait for the defenders to make a move. Wolferton is the one that just steps to his left, opens up the space for Fraser. Then Downs plays it nicely to him. You're right, he should score. Just going to lift this over the top. He doesn't get the contact he wants. Tries to flick it with the outside of his right foot and just hits it into Halaki. Over goes Bree. Gets the applause from the Southampton fans. Referee spotted something in the box. He doesn't want the free kick taken just yet. So Southampton would be seven points behind Ipswich in second, and Southampton would have two games in hand as it stands at the moment. So they still believe that the top two finish is possible. Bree, right-footed corner, headed away by Burgess again on the edge of the six-yard box. It drops down to Arebo. He lofts it into the penalty area. Chaplin leaping highest for Ipswich this time, nodded forward by Morsi. He's deceptively good in the air, actually, Chaplin. I've seen him score a couple of flying headers this season. But Ipswich, with the crowd subdued and frustrated, they can't get the ball at the moment. And we've said that about opponents of Southampton so often this season. But Kieran McKenna, as this game moves towards the 59-minute mark, has surely got to make a change soon. You would expect. I mean, they've got to try and get some momentum in the game to try and put the pressure on Southampton, who you know, conceded a late goal only a few days ago. But you've got to put that pressure on to try and test them. Playing the ball out of defence is Harwood Bellis. Scoops it high, cross field. Stuart Armstrong took it down neatly, but was then robbed by the hard-working Jackson. Not a prolific goal scorer, but is an outlet. Back he goes to uh, Wolfenden. There are plenty of attacking options for uh, both sides among the substitutes for Ipswich. Uh, Walton, the goalkeeper, then Clark. Edmondson, Harness, Taylor, Sarmiento, the low knee, Travis and Nathan Broadhead, who may well come on into double figures in terms of goals for the season. The Southampton subs as Arebo brings the ball down on the halfway line for them. And he's nudged it wide left to Stuart Armstrong. Adam Armstrong was calling for it early. Good way to pass to Fraser. Fraser's low cross, steered away by Burgess on the slide. Otherwise, Adam Armstrong would have had a tap in at the back post. Really, really good defending. The timing of the slide from Burgess was crucial. But if Fraser properly whips this in with pace, then I think Adam Armstrong has a tap in at the back post. He has to realise that Burgess is there. He has to realise that that ball has to be properly fizzed across towards Adam Armstrong. It wasn't quite, and Burgess just timed his slide perfectly. Here comes that Ipswich change. Caden Jackson off. Nathan Broadhead, the Welsh international, on. Broadhead, four goals in his last eight Ipswich appearances. Meanwhile, as the double change is made, the other change at right back, Harry Clark for Tuan Sebi. Make it a triple change. Well, you're right, Dean. Jack Taylor taking to the field as well, the former Peter man for Ipswich. These are attacking changes so far because Clark is more adept at going forward than Tuan Sebi. And the other change is that Luongo coming off it is. And Taylor takes his place in midfield. Now there's a Southampton man down inside his own half of the field. Uh, just shy of the halfway line. Can't quite see who it is who's being treated because the physios are in the way. I think it might be Jan Bednarek. And so play is stopped. An hour gone. And no surprise that Ipswich have made that change. The Southampton subs, by the way. Lumley, the goalkeeper. Walker-Peters, Manning, Smallbone, Mara, 
Rothwell, Sulemana, Edozi and David Brooks. So plenty of championship quality on the benches of both sides. It does feel like, doesn't it, Dean Ashton, like a potentially really significant Easter Monday, this, especially if the score stays like this and if Leeds were to beat Hull later. It, it, it'll feel like it's absolutely massive if you were to drop points at this, at this moment. There's still plenty of games to go, plenty of twists and turns, of course, but every point will feel so vital at the moment. And we've seen that Kieran McKenna has, has played his hand those three substitutions and what will we see? Will we see a, a reshuffle in terms of formation or will it just be freshness and more energy and maybe a bit more quality that's going to be needed from those players coming on? Worth noting, Ipswich and Leeds will both have played 40 games after tonight. Leicester would still have a game in hand. So Enzo Maresca's team have that up their sleeve. Their next game is at home to Birmingham on Saturday. Leeds will be away at Coventry and Southampton away at Blackburn. And Ipswich away at Norwich. Dean will be there live for Talk Sport 2 in slightly more familiar surroundings. Now then, Bednarek is limping towards the far side. Southampton don't seem to have anybody ready to come on. And Bednarek looks like the way he's moving that he isn't going to be able to carry on. He's almost bending forward again there, Bednarek. They'll, temp they'll definitely be temporarily down to 10, Southampton, but surely they're going to want to get possibly a Walker Peters maybe onto the field we'll see I think Bednarek is going to try and carry on here Southampton have got the throw midway inside the Ipswich half far side the left and Bednarek will try and come back on shortly 2-1 Southampton lead at Ipswich in the 63rd minute of the game Talk Sport and Talk Sport 2 back tomorrow night with Premier League football all 10 Premier League games this week this midweek with us Tuesday Newcastle against Everton West Ham against Tottenham Wednesday Arsenal Luton and Manchester City Villa so huge games for all sorts of reasons and Thursday Liverpool Sheffield United and Chelsea Manchester United the rest of the games are on the app every game matters and every goal matters at this stage of the season here is Clark in the right back position. First touch for him for Ipswich. Fired forward by Morsi up the middle towards Al Hamadi, and it takes a bounce and is gathered by Bazunu. Are they almost a 4 4 2 possibly here, Ipswich, with Broadhead playing through the middle as well? I think Connor Chaplin's pushed up as well. Look, you've either got to be brave and really go and try and press Southampton higher up the pitch and try and win that ball at source, or you go a bit longer, a bit a bit sooner towards Al Hamadi and look to play it in behind over the top towards Broadhead and Hutchinson and Bednarek is back onto the field so Southampton restored to 11 players and they are comfortable at the moment they win another free kick Stuart Armstrong goes down 10 yards shy of the halfway line and as it stands Leeds will go top of the championship with a victory over playoff chasing Hull at 8 o'clock with all the team news ahead of our talk sport commentary here's Jim Proudfoot and they made one change Joe to the side that was held at Watford Firpo in for Cooper so Byram switches to right back Gray into midfield and Ampadu back to centre half three Hull changes to the team surprisingly beaten by Stoke Morton replaces McLaughlin so Slater moves to full back and call to centre half two fans in for Zorori and oh for Ohio and as things stand as you say Leeds top of the table if they win we kick off at 8 thanks Jim looking forward to that on the drive home live on Talk Sports and Hull City and start the night six points off the playoff places with two games in hand as well and Norwich Coventry and Preston all lost today in the race for the playoffs so renewed hope for Hull maybe as Bazzuni, the Southampton goalkeeper, chips the ball long. You've missed nothing here at Portman Road. Ipswich 1, Southampton 2. But here's Broadhead onto the attack. Through to Al Hamadi. He's bursting into the penalty area. What a run off the post. So close to an equaliser from nothing. Al Hamadi, so often a source of goals off the bench since joining the club, very nearly made it 2 2. Oh, how close can you be? I mean, it's brilliant from Nathan Broadhead. Nice and bright and alert with a, a lovely touch and a flick round the corner and then plays it into Al Hamadi. He gets the nutmeg to start with, falls nicely for him. I think he bobbles the strike. That might just mean he doesn't hit it exactly where he wants it. Once you start to bobble it, it can spin away, but it hits the base of the post and comes out. 
That could have been a huge moment for Ipswich. That's what Ipswich can do. That's what Ali Al Hamadi can do. Brought in from AFC Wimbledon in the winter window. Not made a start for Ipswich. His 11 appearances, including this one, have all come off the bench. Hits the post and it stays 2-1 Southampton. Here is Morsi for Ipswich. Is this the start of a better spell for the home team? Who are used to coming from behind in matches. Here is Broadhead. Infield from the near side, the left halfway line. He's lost the ball to Downs. Flynn Downs racing up the near side, the Southampton right. Held up by Broadhead and then slips as he plays it back to Bree. And the ball's gone out of play and that's an Ipswich throw in the left-back position. I guess, Dean, sometimes when you're struggling for momentum in a game, a little incident like that has, has got the crowd going. It has. I mean, it was really good play, wasn't it, from Broadhead? And a bit of look for al Hamadi. Can't do much more, can he? Fraser driving forward edge of the D, right-footed curler straight at Ladke. He looked menacing there, Fraser, but the shot was anything but. Ladke made a simple save. Now it's Taylor for Ipswich, whipping the ball over the halfway line towards the run of Hutchinson. Good sliding challenge from Bednarek. Now the atmosphere rises up another notch. We're into the final quarter of the game, live on Talk Sport. Ipswich seeking an equaliser. That would not be enough to take them top, by the way. They need a win to go top of the championship. Early ball in from Chaplin, crossfield to the left. Davis looking to dart downfield. Davis edge of the penalty area. Back it goes to Taylor, onto Broadhead! What a finish! It's 2-2! The super sub has struck! Nathan Broadhead and Ipswich have come from behind again! What a fantastic last 23 minutes we've got in store here at Portman Road! Broadhead like an arrow into the bottom corner and the pendulum swings again. Ipswich 2, Southampton 2. Well, McKenna played his cards and he's come out with a full house because it's absolutely brilliant. From Taylor to start with, the pass is just so creative because it's not even really on. He just plays it first time, doesn't even look, just plays it into the path of Broadhead and in one foul swoop he just swivels and strikes it through the legs of the defender and it is past Pazunu before he can really dive. It's a fantastic goal from Ipswich. So inventive, so crisp with the finish. They are right back in it. Here we go. Here we go. Ipswich fans have seen it all before. In fact, not in their last home game, but in the home game before that, they were 2-1 down to Bristol City, scored two late goals to win 3-2, and they are level here against Southampton, 2-2 the score. And here is Davis bursting into the Southampton half, he took it in his stride, he went for goal from range, it was blocked, it'll drop down to Broadhead, Ipswich are all over Southampton all of a sudden, but then Downs nips in with authority to win it back. Downs strides towards the halfway line and Fraser tucks it infield to Stuart Armstrong who was caught very late by a really poor challenge from Taylor. And Taylor could be in trouble here. Maybe a yellow... Well, I, th I think it's definitely a yellow card challenge. 2-2, Dean Ashton, 21 minutes to go. Yeah, I think he's just a bit pumped up, isn't he? There, that's for sure. Jack Taylor, you know, he's been involved in the goal and trying to feed off the energy of the crowd after that... After that goal, gets himself a yellow card. It was low, the challenge. It's just that Armstrong was just a bit too quick and he really cleaned him out at stud level. Portman Road is bouncing. Never question the excitement of the EFL. And on the Talk Sport Network, we just love every minute of it, every kick and every goal. Here comes the Southampton change. And Fraser, who's been wasteful with a couple of chances, is going off. And David Brooks, who is on loan from Bournemouth, is the man who is going to replace him. Darting on, wearing the green boots. And Southampton, from a position of real strength, Bazuna had hardly had a shot to save, have suddenly been pegged back to 2-2. I mean, they've defended well, Joe. It's just sometimes you've got to say, what a wonderful goal. Just so quick. You know, when you play one touch, so it's one touch from Jack Taylor and then a one-touch finish so hard to even close down the space when you do that. It was just an excellent, excellent goal. So Leicester still lead the championship, but Ipswich are level on points with them. Only behind on goal difference. Another Ipswich goal sends them top of the league. Leads against Hull to come in less than an hour on Talk Sport. Don't go anywhere.
It's the only place to be between now and the end of the season and beyond. Sammy Morsi rifles one goalwards, filled by Bazunu. It was a long way out. Bazunu gathers the ball at the second attempt. And Ipswich fans now feel that everything they hit has a chance of going in. But it's Stuart Armstrong on the counter for Southampton. He's got Adam Armstrong out to the left-hand side, hugging that far touchline. Very wide position on that left wing. And he's tried to force his way in field beyond Hutchinson. Hasn't got beyond it. Probably... Ipswich's best spell of the entire game this I mean it's just again they're feeding off the energy so you know closing down Bazunu making him play out of play lifting the crowd once again as Al Hamadi does and look they were tested mentally at the week at the uh, couple of days ago Southampton and they wilted by conceding a goal how will they handle this it's 2-2 throw on the far side which Clark will take we're in the 72nd minutes Halfway line is Clark. Long throw towards Al Hamadi. Header away by Taylor Harwood Bellis. The referee signals for an Ips which throw. And I spoke about the pendulum swinging. The momentum in the game has completely changed. And that's what they do so well, Ips, which when they get into these sort of moments and feed off the crowd and get that momentum, teams have struggled to, to hold them off. Here's Jack Taylor, left hand side. It's midway into the Southampton half, wins a free kick. With his back to goal, a foul by the former Ipswich man Downs. And now a chance, a rare chance in the game for the centre-halves Wolfenden and Burgess to come forward. And Southampton have some defending to do here. Now it's Ipswich who are having a lot more possession, lots of territory. And maybe Ipswich can go on and win the game and send themselves top. Davis standing over the free kick. He is the assist king in the championship. I think you called him earlier, Dean. And rightly so. 15 league assists this season. Joint most in the championship. Joint king. With Jorginho Ruter of Leeds. Everybody back for Southampton. Almost everybody fought for Ipswich here. Davis will deliver this left-footed, not a good delivery, gathered by Bazunu easily inside the six-yard box. Wasn't the... The King there, and Bazuna has held the ball upfield towards Stuart Armstrong. Great throw from the goalkeeper, but Burgess tracking back has won it back for Ipswich. Now Chaplin's got it on the edge of the lip of the centre circle. Steers it wide right to Hutchinson. This is the sort of atmosphere, the sort of frenetic energy that the Ipswich fans and players love. As the ball is hammered away on the volley by Harwood Bellis out of play. It's sort of chaos football. It is, but what it does is it puts pressure on every single touch now of a Southampton player. Stuart Armstrong pretty much hasn't put a foot wrong and all of a sudden there, because he's under so much pressure and the levels have been raised by Ipswich, just a loose touch, he gives the ball away and it just gives the energy and the momentum back to Ipswich. Ipswich have now scored 83 league goals this season. Southampton, 76 league goals. The ball is steered back by Harwood Bellis to Bazunic. And wonderfully vocal now, the Ipswich supporters. Arms outstretched all around the stadium. Playing from right to left in the second half, the team on the field towards the Sir Bobby Robson end, which has witnessed many a big moment so far in this campaign. They want back-to-back -back promotions from the third tier to the top tier for the first time since the Sir Alf Ramsey days, the early 1960s. And the... Right back Breeze being urged to get on with the throw for Southampton. A flying header forward by Davis is going to go out of play. So 15 and a half minutes to go, plus stoppage time, 2-2. I think Southampton are readying a, another change very shortly. I know they have done Ipswich since the substitutions. They've really looked to lock in from throw-ins, from Southampton's throw-ins. I can see every single player pointing to make sure. It's almost as if the substitutes have got messages on to say, look, from a Southampton throw, they are not able to get hold of it at all. Chaplin almost won the ball back on the slide there. Ipswich fans out of their seats and everything almost at the moment. Here comes Southampton, though, with Brooks. Crossfield ball beautifully angled left uh, from right to left to the far side, and Adam Armstrong, he waits for the overlapping run. It's pulled back towards Adam Armstrong by Stuart Armstrong, but in the way to clear where Ipswich Town. Here is Stevens, the Southampton captain. Midway into opposition territory and still very much a potent threat in the game, Southampton. 
Brooks can't reach the ball. Midway inside opposition territory. One back by Taylor. Now then, Al Hamadi. It's three against two all of a sudden. Al Hamadi down the middle, edge of the penalty area. He's got options right and left. He pokes it towards the left. It's come out to Chaplin, who drives it wide. Right footed on the slice. Al Hamadi had ages to play it to his left. Taylor was there. He elected not to do so. And in the end, the chance comes to nothing. Oh, I thought he did the right thing for so long there because he was so far ahead of the others that if he'd have played it to his left or right I think the the attack would have slowed right down so he was trying to wait and wait for one of the defenders to make a move they didn't that what that is what was crucial Bednarek and Harwood Bellis perfect positioning from that counter-attack and in the end Al Hamadi just ran out of ideas here comes another change this time for Southampton in the game that you just don't want to end Che Adams comes off and it is Samuel Adozi another former Manchester City player who scored important goals uh, off the bench this season for Southampton who takes the field the curly haired Adozi Stevens for Southampton square ball to Downs middle of midfield Downs has got acres of space to dart into up the middle he threads the ball left to Stuart Armstrong first touch for the dangerous Adozi in the left wing position he races forward taking on Clark great run by Adozi he's still going he could have cut it back there in the end couldn't quite get his foot wrapped around the ball Ipswich clear only as far as Adozi again but now it's one back by Harry Clark for there in the right back position Clark's pass forward is a poor one Southampton having to get on the halfway line for quality and excitement it's surely one of the best games of the championship season so far Dean Ashton oh, we've, st we've still got I'm sure another twist or turn to go in this game Adozi there brilliant just coming straight on straight away getting at Clark just forgot to take the shot Stevens is 35 yards out forward to Adam Armstrong first touch was good second less so smuggled away by Burgess it's come back to Brooks he's on the corner of the penalty area lovely way to pass Stevens cuts it back Adam Armstrong once twice and he's blocked by Hladke two swings of the ball and in the end Hladke goes down to save and a heart in mouth moment for the Ipswich fans and as Dean said with 12 minutes plus stoppage time to go there could be plenty more of those to come. Oh, it feels like a big chance, doesn't it, for Adam Armstrong just to sap the energy out of this place. Lovely cutback from Stevens. He takes the first shot, it hits Wolverton on the backside, and then it hits Sladke. Davis, left wing position, has time to steer the ball across, it's cleared away. Hutchinson went down right on the edge of the penalty area there for Ipswich. The fans are furious. No uh, foul, says the referee. Ipswich need a goal to go top of the championship at the moment it's Leicester who hold the lead and leads with the chance to go top later when they play Hull on Talk Sport here's an opportunity for a dozy racing in field from the left touches heavy behind for a goal kick to Ipswich again out of our seats all the time here well it's what it has done is it's really opened up the game you know it, it, yes they're taking risks in terms of they're allowing Southampton to now counter attack with less numbers at the back Ipswich but they're going for it they're not going to hold back and Except a draw. Hladke, the goalkeeper of Fripps, which all in green. They looked potentially a beaten side at one stage early in the second half. If Southampton had got the third goal they were looking for, it might have been the case, but it's 2-2. Chaplin shoving the back, fouled. Free kick Ipswich, just shy of the halfway line. We should be used to this, watching <laughs> games, particularly involving Ipswich, and Southampton have had a couple of thrillers as well this season but it's always just so exciting each and every time. It's like a novelty. Here is Brooks for Southampton. Good feet to race over halfway, and then he shuffles it wide to his right and Bree. Brooks has continued the run in field, gets the return pass. Oh, he's blocked off impressively there, though, by Taylor. Coming across to sweep it away from danger for Ipswich. Bit more mobile Taylor than Luongo. Here is Aribo, though, for Southampton. Middle of the Ipswich half. Back it goes to Stevens, forward towards the edge of the penalty area. Stuart Armstrong has poked it a little too far for Adozi to pull in across. Adozi's kept it in by the dead ball line, very close to the Southampton fans on one side of the stadium. 2-2 on Talk Sport. Adozi looking to wriggle his way into the penalty area, sandwiching between two blue shirts. In the end, that's Wolfenden who has sent it skywards out of play, and it's a Southampton throw. And the pace of the game is just utterly relentless. It is, and Adozi's got up to that pace, which is surprising so far. He's already giving Clark a few issues over on that left-hand side, just gets it and drives straight towards the toes of Clark to try and twist and turn. 
And here is Aribo up that far side, the left again for Southampton. Touched on Twidozi, back towards Aribo. He let it run across his body. Broadhead with a slightly desperate challenge for Ipswich to try and clear. It's his goal that's brought things level. Adozi dinks in the cross, headed up into the air by Burgess, and then further clear from Morsi. Now it's held up by Al Hamadi, who's hit the post, remember, in the game. Steers it to his right and Hutchinson. This is where they're really dangerous with the pace on the counter attack. Hutchinson trying to take on the defender, Harwood Bellis. He's reached the edge of the 18-yard box, right on that far side, and a lovely ball nudged infield to Connor Chaplin. Chaplin pulls it back across, stretching to clear is James Bree, away from danger. Nine minutes to go. Make sure you stick with Talk Sport. It could be a very exciting nine minutes plus stoppage time here as Southampton make a change. Off goes Stuart Armstrong, and here comes Will Smallbone. Lots more of this between now and the end of the season. We've got more live football on national radio than anybody else, and we're not even done for today. <laughs> Elland Road leads against Hull coming up shortly, and it's... Now, is that a double change for Southampton? It is, because also going off is Aribo and Rothwell. Joe Rothwell is coming onto the field as well. Another Bournemouth low knee onto the pitch for Southampton. Wants to get back control, doesn't he, of that midfield, I think. Russell Martin, so freshening things up in there with Rothwell and Smallbone. Because since Ipswich's changes, it's it's them that are controlling the middle park. He scored twice in his last appearance, did uh, Joe Rothwell. Here is Burgess for Ipswich. Back it goes to Ladke. Ladke inside his own penalty area, the goalkeeper. Square ball to Wolfenden. Wolfenden under a bit of pressure from Edozi. He didn't look comfortable there. And it's rattled off the heel of Edozi and out of play for a throw to Ipswich in their right back position 83rd minutes and the scores level on Talk Sport in this epic promotion race that may well go right down to the very last kick of the season Chaplin on the right hand side scoops the ball over halfway Al Hamadi is chasing cleared away by Harwood Bellis and then Bree with a slightly risky ball back towards his own penalty area but Benarek has time to retrieve it in front of Chaplin and steered back by Downs into the path of uh, Harwood Bellis again. And now Rothwell with a first touch, scampering over the halfway line. Good feet from Roth Rothwell, and he pings a lovely crossfield ball on the diagonal to find Brooks. Brooks shaping to cut infield into a central position. He does just that. He's found Rothwell, touched it on towards Adozi. Poor pass initially. Adozi had to run to keep it in, down by the dead ball line. But the attack is still on here. Adozi teasing and twisting Clark, who nearly fell over. Back it goes to the edge of the penalty area, whipped in by Flynn Downs. Up goes the looping header. Here's Ladke, the Ipswich goalkeeper, to gather it high above his head. There was no direction really on the looping header from Jack Stevens and the scores stay level so Leicester stay top above Ipswich for now and just shows how advanced Jack Stevens has been in this game you know he's that left back when he's when Ipswich have the ball but there he's getting in the box looking for a header again it was just a little bit sloppy though wasn't it the ball to a, a dozy if that was better he'd been able to have got a shot away and Southampton would be 10 points off the top two as they were at the start of the afternoon they would have a couple of games in hand but surely that's too big a gap to bridge even with the games in hand even if they were to win both of those offside flag up on the near side of the field in the Ipswich half so Ipswich take the free kick quickly Morsi from the lip of the centre circle pings a delightful crossfield ball Davis takes it in his stride hauled down by Bree and the referee has a look at it and it's a free kick right on the edge of the area is Bree in trouble he's off Bree is sent off and Southampton will play the last five and a half minutes plus stoppage time with ten men. 2-2. Two -two. Well, it was a brilliant ball to start with, just over the top of Bree's head. And Leif Davis took it beautifully with his chest, angled it towards goal as if he was then going to run through 1v1. The only one thing I would say is, I think Harwood Bellis is pretty close to coming across on the cover. But the referee, Michael Salisbury, doesn't think so. He's given him a, a straight red card. I think he's very debatable. It could either, easily have gone either way. But he, think, he knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing, Bree, because he thought, I've been beaten here and Davis is in on goal. Bree takes a very long walk because the corner is where the tunnel is, all the way to the right-hand side. And he's getting waved at, waved goodbye by the Ipswich fans. 2-2. Bree has been sent off and the crowd all around us are on their feet here.
Four and a half minutes to go. 2-2 two, two the score. Ipswich were ahead, then they were behind. Now they've hauled themselves level and Southampton are down to ten men. And Ipswich have a free kick here, right on the edge of the box, left of centre certainly, well left of the edge of the D, but it's certainly on for the right-footed shot, you'd have to think, from this sort of range. Taylor and Broadhead and Chaplin and Hutchinson are all standing over it. Morsi's standing square all on his own and they need to keep an eye on that. Do Southampton, all nine outfield players back to defend after the sending off of James Bree. You're listening to Talk Sport live from Portman Road in the Championship. There's a four-man Southampton wall in red, one man lying down behind it, and the free kick towards the left-hand corner of the penalty area. Quite a tight angle. I wonder if the right-footed shooter will go for the far corner where Bazuna is or try and bend it into the near corner. It's going to be... Jack Taylor to place the ball, taps it to Broadhead to curl it. Double deflection, Southampton cleared away. Hit the bottom of the wall and Southampton through Smallbone, knock it clear high towards the near side. I thought it was a strange choice. I thought it was a, a good position to take the, the strike on. Or, like you just said, Morsi was free on the edge of the area if you were just to shift it a little bit further. As soon as you do that there, it does allow the wall to come out and block at close range. Well, at this stage, you'd expect Ipswich to look the more likely to go on and win it against ten men, but such is the championship that you just never know. Clark has won the ball back on the halfway line, but at the expense of a foul on a dozy. Free kick, Southampton, just into opposition territory. Three minutes left. What a wonderful day of football in the second tier. And so much excitement and not done yet. Three minutes of this game to go, plus added time. You can hear maybe the... Southampton fans in the distance. And Smallbone has placed the free kick down, and they have sent uh, Bednarek forward here, Southampton, and Stevens is there as well. It's just inside the Ipswich half, and Ipswich have a very high defensive line, pumped cross-field by Smallbone. Davis wins the initial header for Ipswich. Now then they can break. They flood forward the team in blue and white. Davis surging. He's 10 yards from the edge of the penalty area. Davis square, broadhead, blocked! He had a clear shot and it was brilliantly blocked and now the flag is up on the near side of the field as Chaplin, first time left-footed effort, is steered wide of goal so it wouldn't have gone in anyway. But Ipswich very nearly breaking and a goal here to win the game and take them to the top of the championship above Leicester. Ipswich 2, Southampton 2, Chaplin going off, Jeremy Sarmiento the Loney coming off. I've got to say, what a magnificent block from Jan Bednarek. I mean, he's got half a back anyway, the way he's limping around, and that would not have helped, but he had to take it because Broadhead was looking to strike venomously towards the goal. It was a great break from Ipswich. Southampton, really, they shouldn't be caught in the way that they were. You'd think they'd be sitting back now with one less player, but maybe not. Bazzini, the goalkeeper, will hammer the ball clear for Southampton. Just over a minute of normal time to go on TalkSport. Is there to be a late winner here? Southampton need it to really keep alive, you feel, their automatic hopes. Ipswich need it to go to the summit of the table. If they don't get it, then Leeds will have the chance to go above them and Leicester. Leeds against Hull at eight. The ball is on the halfway line now. Southampton have knocked it forward, hit it away by... Uh, Burgess for Ipswich, flick forward to the halfway line by Morsi, well retrieved by Rothwell in front of Sarmiento who's just come on. Rothwell has spread the ball out to the left-hand side and it's Jack Stevens, all right foot, nudges the ball forward to Adozi. He's 35 yards from goal, good quick feet from Adozi, shuffling feet, knocks it down the inside left channel. Adam Armstrong crosses, that's blocked and that's a Southampton corner. The 10 men have a corner into the last 25 seconds of normal time. He's been really bright, Adozi, since he's come on. He's made a difference on that left-hand side. Good ball down the side for uh, Adam Armstrong. Doesn't matter whether you've got one less player. Set plays are still dangerous. Well, there are only really four in the middle for Southampton, including uh, Stevens and Bednarek, who looks like he's gone right in front of the goalkeeper. It'll be Will Smallbone to deliver, and it's going to be a thumping header away by Burgess yet again. Absolutely dominant in the air, the Australian international centre-half. We are into stoppage time, seven added minutes on Talk Sport. Ipswich 2, 10-man Southampton 2. Ipswich will be second at the end of the afternoon as it stands, and Leicester will remain the leaders unless they can score here. 
Now then, what's the referee spotted? He spotted a foul. Late challenge on Burgess. Free kick to Ipswich. <laughs> would a draw be fair in the end, Dean Ashton? Over the course of the game? I mean, you would, you'd say overall Southampton have probably been the better team, but sometimes there's just no stopping this Ipswich side. Al Hamadi, left-hand edge of the penalty area. He's pulled it back towards Broadhead now. Sarmiento and Hutchinson are in the middle. Here's an opportunity for Davis in the left-wing position. Infield to Taylor. Lots of red Southampton shirts back behind the ball. Nearly a minute of the seven added have been played. Wolfenden urged to shoot from 25 yards. In the end, he steered it wide to Harry Clark. Clark crosses. Davis, back post, nods it down. Who's he going to drop to? Cleared away by Smallbone for Southampton. Up to the relative safety of the halfway line. Burgess there to prod it back to Gladke. Ipswich will come all over again in search for a winner. Yeah, just got to try and keep the pressure on for this full six and a half minutes. Knocked up the right-hand side by Clark. Control well by Sarmiento, shaving the cut in field, but then he slipped under pressure from Roth Rothwell. And the ball is at the feet of Smallbone. Smallbone back to uh, Downs. Downs the tall midfield player to Bednarek and now out to the left back position where Stevens is waiting Southampton so far have defended admirably since going down to 10 men a few minutes ago nearly two through the seven added Rothwell's got the ball on the halfway line for them Rothwell darts towards the central position Smallbone square pass to Downs and he gets the return does Will Smallbone a goal enough to win it for either team here surely Dozy's plucked it out of the air neatly left wing position this is good possession from Southampton Adam Armstrong is in the middle David Brooks whips in the cross it's headed away by Wolfenden a little bit of nerves maybe for some of the Ipswich fans in the crowd despite having one man more here comes Rothwell Fall to Brooks, little flick at the, at the corner of the penalty area, and then Brooks whips it in, and it's steered behind by the stretching Wolfenden from the edge of the six-yard box. That could so nearly have been an own goal in the end of corner to Southampton that Smallbone will take. And Davis, has he gone down with cramp here? 2-2. Oh, you, you just wonder whether they've kind of punched themselves out, Ipswich, in getting back in the game. Because even with ten players, Southampton <laughs> have kept possession better. They've already looked more dangerous. Brilliant bit of play from Brooks. Lovely little sort of Croy flick into the path. And then the ball across. Wolfenden had to be perfect in his positioning. Smallbone will take the corner from the near side. Davis is back on his feet. Ipswich against the 10 men of Southampton. Four added minutes to go on Talk Sport, and they've still got some defending to do here, Ipswich. Small bone, one arm, up into the air. What's the delivery like? It's going to be right-footed and out swinging into the six-sharp box and there is Wolfenden to head it away. For Ipswich, it's going to spiral out towards the far side to left and a Southampton throw about 10 yards from the corner flag. Halfway through the added time. 2-2 and suddenly a nervousness has descended over Portman Road where they were jubilant before the home fans. Can Southampton, even with 10, finish stronger and steal victory late. Stevens in the left wing position after the throw was popped back to him by Rothwell. It's another Southampton throw. Again, it's down by that corner flag on the far side. Great noise from both sets of fans now. Adozi juggles the ball over the head of Hutchinson in a tight area, but Morsi's there to win it back, and Morsi drives it high and long upfield. Only half away, drops down to Taylor. Now then, Alhamadi, he's beyond Bednarek. He's touched it onto Taylor. What a tackle by David Brooks, sliding in, but Bednarek has been penalised now. For it was a foul on Alhamadi, sliding in, and he gets a yellow card. Free kick to Ipswich, midway inside the Southampton half. 2-2 two -two Ipswich against the 10 men. I mean, he's lucky to get a yellow card here Bednarek I mean he wipes out Alhamadi who possibly could have got it the other side and been through on goal so Bednarek has taken a massive risk there but with only a few minutes to go maybe it was the right thing to do it's a free kick to Ipswich just a slither to the right of centre little angle for this free kick midway inside the Southampton half the 10 men with everybody back we are in the 95th minute. Seven were added at the end of the normal 90. Leicester City top of the championship as it stands. Here is Davis for Ipswich to float it high into the penalty area. Headed back across. Burgess goes for it. Could drop for Broadhead. Saved. And then it's pounced on by Bazuna before Burgess can turn home the rebound. Oh, he just didn't quite strike it well enough, did he, Broadhead? As it fell towards him over his right shoulder. 
Again, he sort of hit it into the ground, took the sting out of it, straight into Pizzunu's chest. 90 seconds to go. 2-2. Ball is back with the Ipswich goalkeeper, Václav Hladky. The crowd getting to their feet around us again. Wolfenden. Ipswich born. Square to the right-hand side, and Clark, likewise, born in Ipswich. Local heroes among the 11 on the field for Ipswich. It's an opportunity now for them to come forward with Wolfenden into opposition territory. Steers it wide to the near side, the left, and Leif Davis. Davis delivers high towards the back post, and it's a very calm and impressive backheader under pressure from Stevens to his goalkeeper, you have to say. Got nothing left, really, have they? I mean, both sides. A bit like Wardley and Clark last night on Talk Sport, just punching, can't even raise their arms. These two have put a lot into the game, especially only a couple of days after playing very, very difficult. Long clearance downfield by the goalkeeper, and it's all the way through to his opposite number, Gladke, who bowls the ball out to Harry Clark. 2-2 the score, there are only 30 seconds left. This is surely the last chance. Ipswich have possession with Morsi. Morsi evades the challenge of Adam Armstrong. He's run over halfway. He swept a lovely crossfield ball. That's a great one for Davis. Davis takes it down. He's inside the area. He steered it back across. A miscue. Sarmiento! It's in! Sarmiento has poked it into the corner! This is absolutely incredible! I don't believe my eyes! Ipswich have won 3-2 in the 97th minute! They're going top of the championship! When you think you've seen it all, think, think again! Sarmiento is mobbed by his teammates! What a vital toe poke into the corner in the context of the championship season. It's another remarkable Ipswich comeback. They lead Southampton by three goals to two. Never, never write off Ipswich Town. You think they're down and out. They're up against the ropes. The referee's going to call it. And then out of nowhere... Ipswich produce a big haymaking knockout possibly in this championship running. Once again, how many times this season are we going to say it? Leif Davis with the awareness, the calmness and the quality to find a teammate in the area. He picked out Sarmiento, who fell over to start with, by the way, and then just somehow gets up and prods it goalwards past Bazunu. 